really going to add to stream. Oh, my God. There we go. Wow. Now, hopefully you had audio that time. Because I found out how you can get the audio when you're doing your things on screen or your videos or whatever, watching a YouTube thing, how you can get audio. It's quite simple. You use Chrome because it can only do it in Chrome. Firefox can't do it. The option just doesn't appear. It's there in Chrome. Go figure that one out. So did everybody hear that one? Hopefully you heard it this time because uh, last time we were trying to do this, we went all around the houses and uh, turned out that um, there we are. So I'm going to get my chat window over here. So did you hear the audio, I wonder? I think you did, because I'm just playing myself back now to, to say yes. Yes, they said in the channel. They said yes. Yes. He's wearing it finally. Yeah, indeed. I'll get around to getting out the um, slush puppy machine eventually as well. Actually doing that, but it requires effort. And you've got, like, on this hand, you've got to go out with a boat and speed around. Or on this hand, clean the house and find ways to make money. I know, let's go out in the boat. Yeah, right, so... Uh, mm. Anyway, thank you for joining us. Uh, let's have a look who's in the chat channel. Just say hello to a few people. Um, some people have already donated, like Richard Warnock and Mark uh, something something Urbex Photography. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, Donna Mod is in channel. Highway Shepherds Chrissy. Fat Blokes UK. TNMT Forever. Hello, another moderator. LK Computers, another moderator. Exploring Within. Uh, Subaru, Subaru, sorry, RB320, Martin Hill, Andrew Clark, Dennis. Hiya, Dennis. Chris Thornley, can I have four beers? You can indeed have four beers. I don't know why. I don't know if I really want beers tonight. I'm actually feeling a bit tired, so I don't know. I'm going to knock myself out if I start drinking beer tonight. Mm. That's the first beer I've had, and I'm going to take it easy, I think, because I just don't want to fall asleep on you in the middle of the show. Uh, exploring urbex minisaurius tnmt forever hello gail how are you all? and uh exploring with carl kaylee colston explores blimmin Eck, the haunted coachman lucifer another moderator um exploring with tinsk my goodness i think they're coming out of the woodwork tonight and you know why don't you because of the subject matter of the title of this stream i think they're coming out of the woodwork right daniel hellman uh, some some arsehole called the Secret Vault somewhere there. Um, Hidden History with Ray, DJ Carl Milliam, Million, Milliam, maybe it's Milliam, I don't know, in an alternate universe. Chris Boyland, Minisaurius, uh, um, oh, Jack Hillman's been naughty already, so he's been hidden. Oh, dear. <laughs> I wonder who that is, eh? Hmm. Hmm. I wonder who that one was. Yeah. Um. ALW explore exploration or exploration. Um, after half an hour, Daniel Hellman, Samsung, exploring with Jenny V. Hello. Um, Badger K, Chris Thornley, and we mean Vacant Haven. Hey, hey. Um, and Vacant Haven uh, is what I'm shaving, something like that. Um, uh, Martin Hill who just gave me the most crazy large donation the other day. So I'm still indebted. Thank you very much. Um, and yes, I will get around to send you some stickers. Actually, you sent me your address and I've forgotten to do it. I actually have to print some up. I have to print some stickers and send you some stickers. Remind me again. I am just living in a little world of uh, waking up and editing videos. And I just forget things. Um, Adam George, uh, uh, exploring with Aish. Yeah, who else we got? Chris, uh, we've done Chris Boyland. Uh, Jess Matthews, Cat, Mags, Paul Robbins. Oh, I think we're about there now. I think we've pretty much got it all uh, covered. All the people in the chat. So, yeah, I'm using StreamYard um, on Chrome tonight uh, because I think it's got more features. It was complaining in Firefox it couldn't do green screening. And it couldn't, um, it couldn't do all sorts of things. Anyway, I'm going to experiment with some new software soon to do some streaming because there's, um, there's another one. I mean, I, I went from OBS 
to using um, StreamYard. And StreamYard, it turns out, is a bit limited in some ways. I'd love to get some. Uh, I'd love to get some things in StreamYard that will allow me to like hear a noise when somebody does a super chat, just like what happened then, but I didn't notice it. Uh, Dano Agar, he says, here's a tip uh, to help you make some more money. Money, money, money. He says, yes. Um, why does it say buy my buy my own super chat? What? What, what, what the hell does that mean? Buy my own super chat. Why would I want to buy my own super chat when I, I am me? What's the what does it what's, what's it trying to tell me there? I don't understand that. That doesn't make much sense. Let's see if we can get my eyes a bit better in focus. Nah. Anyway, so uh, toying with the idea of spending two hundred and forty quid on Streamyard for a year, or using free software that's out there. I'm going to try something else for the next one, which will go ching and make sounds when people do super chats. So I'm not going to forget them. Somebody else has done a super chat, which I nearly just missed. Rare ginger squirrel. Now, it doesn't um, have a message, but rare ginger squirrel, thank you very much for your for your, your kind donation. Um, right, so... Um, uh, where are boats and bunnies somebody says and what about obs yes i was using obs but obs has limitations and it keeps on messing up when i switch screens plus Streamyard is quite nice because you can just bring people in you can bring a load of people in at once so uh, who knows who knows i may run a separate application to just make sounds that will come into the stream perhaps and maybe I, well, God knows I'm going to do it. I don't know, but I'm going to try something else anyway and see if we can just invite people in and have some have some sounds. Uh, somebody saying do stickers. I could do, but that's what uh, Dan's got, hasn't he? When I come on Dan's thing, suddenly everybody puts loads of pictures of me wearing my uh, fluffy hat, which I have still not found. I've still not found my fluffy hat. That's gone. I ordered another one because of this, because I was feeling a little bit depressed because my old, like stalwart fluffy hat has gone um so i will have to put the new one which looks really nice i have to put it in the washing machine which is a big no-no and get it looking like the old one because when you put them in the washing machine that's when they look like the ones i had so i've got to get back to that scruffy look so i'll be putting it in the washing machine pretty soon so you'll see the nice new one for a little bit and i'll say right now this is going to go back to the way i like it thank you very much so um and then it'll come back in the next one oh have i got any plans to take the boat out um soon yes actually i have as in tomorrow i am going to take the boat out tomorrow now i had to fabricate i haven't got it with me i had to fabricate a special type of um, adapter um because this is like a bay in it. You push it in and twist. Now, this is very popular. This is almost the de facto standard. Now, everyone uses this. But there was a period of time where each manufacturer was making their own little adapter. And it's pretty pathetic because, I mean, you know, you pay a tenner for their plug to go on and, you know, whatever. Anyway, um, I got this and I could looked in there and I thought, oh, I've got that. That's one of these. So I put it in and twisted and it just wasn't doing the thing so i'm like well it looks like it and it looks like it's got lugs to, to bayonet and and i was like hmm so i looked it up on the internet and uh found out that no it is a special type called a bengal 2000 and they produced a different one in 2001 2002 2004 and 2005 so it's a different adapter for every bloody year so anyway um bengal 2000 um, there was two shops that had them. One was in Southampton, and uh, they weren't open, and the other one was in Devon, and they weren't open. So, stuck without having a an adapter, I took the, the, the actual cover off, which is in itself the same dimensions and as the uh, as the type of adapter you're going to need. It screws on in the same way. And I took my Dremel, and I Dremeled it out. I Dremeled out the plastic, and I put one of these on there and cut it off and then uh, epoxy resined it on last night. I took it out there today, put the pump on it. The boat has air. So we is now pumped up. And provided there's no massive air leak, which I don't think there has been since earlier on when I went out to check it, there hasn't been any massive air leak. 
Mm. Then me is going to be on the boat tomorrow. I'm going to take the boat out um, somewhere. And uh, I will film it. I will get a little bit of film on so you can. Uh, yeah, what am I wearing? They're saying, what am I wearing? Indeed, I am wearing the gift, the gift that keep, keeps keep, that keeps giving. I'm wearing dog face, wolf face, Malamud face. And uh, speaking of which, she's downstairs. She hasn't come up yet because I've got no food. Well, she did, but I, the food's gone now. So, so when the food goes, dog goes. Yep. Um, but anyway, that's uh, a gift that was given to me. I believe it was a birthday present by uh, people on the channel. So thank you very much. And uh, I wasn't sure about wearing it, actually. I was you know, sort of not too sure about whether I should wear this out because I'm going to wreck it. But maybe I'll just wear it on the show. I don't know. Because otherwise it's going to get absolutely wrecked if I take it out. Like like the other night we were out, it was peeing down with rain. We were, we were literally scuffing ourselves through um, thorns to get into a cinema. And uh, we got in there, but it was like, you know, I was, you're getting thorns in the face and, and you know, I'm um, just sort of like, yeah, it was it was crazy, crazy, crazy. So anyway, this wouldn't last five minutes. This would become a complete wreck. So, um, yeah, well, so what are people asking us in the channel? And let's go back through some of these comments, see what people are saying. I don't know which one to read, which is easiest to read, to be honest. Um Right. Do, 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 do. So let's see if we can get some comments then. Um, now, I'm going to put in the thing, if anybody wants to come in, I'm going to put the, the uh, StreamYard thing in the comment section. So if you want to come on and talk to us about your horror stories with um, forums, all right, I'm going to rely on you guys tonight to feed and stoke the fire. It's not just going to be me because um, I reckon there's probably a lot of people out there who've had aggro with these forums. So um, it says, uh, Fat Man 98 says, where am I from? You, you sound Welsh. I don't wish to offend you by saying that. You total, utter and complete bastard. How can you say that? Well, I mean, you know, Wales is okay, but I, I'm not one of these people who's proud of my uh, where I come from, to be perfectly honest. Um, uh, I find where I where I sort of used to live, Barry was okay. It was interesting, but where I went to in the Ronda Valleys, God alive! I mean, what a it got depressing in the end. To be perfectly honest, um, so yeah, families from the Ronda Valleys in Wales. But uh. Gary, thank you for your donation of one one English punt. That's very kind. Um, Wirecast or blue jeans? Yeah, well, I, I used to use Wirecast um, uh, by Telestream, and it's not bad. It's pretty good, but I mean, the stream, this Streamyard thing of bringing lots of people in, it seems better. Unless, of course, I do, you know, I do Skype with somebody, and I Skype and bring them in that way, or I could do Streamyard in a window and capture that window in OBS or something else, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so we would have to see whatever works, but I, I would like to have a notification come up when when somebody does a super chat because that will be very useful because I need like slapping anyway. Um, so coming in then, oh, oh my god, T and MT, yeah, we got Tony de Mesquita, I'll be with you now in a second, sir. Um, right, so T and MT forever, thank you very much for your donation. I'm just going to scroll down these um things and then I'll bring you in, Mr. Tony de Mesquita, um, uh, Mesquite. I don't know if you pronounce it that way. You'll have to tell me in a second. Um, probably the person who stole, stole your scooter took your hat. No, yeah, not my scooter, thankfully. But anyway, right, Tony de Mesquita. Let's bring him in then. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, thank you. Good, good. Oh. Where about are you from? Well, I, I've been all over the place, but I'm now living in workshop in Nottinghamshire. Nottinghamshire, right. And have you come to tell us about your tales of woe with forums? Not with forums, but just to chat to you. I'm always trying, I'm always watching your videos. And yep. that's very interesting in your Hazlitt video, because I, I used to live in Gosport at one time. Oh, my God. And my granddad was actually in that hospital for a little while. 
Right. So you've uh, you've had some uh, time spent inside it when it was actually an active hospital then? Just visiting him, yes. And yep. uh, St John's Ambulance did an exercise in the bunkers there. Right. Yeah. Ah, now the but when you say the bunkers, you mean the underground tunnels? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So did they uh, did they sort of practice um, having to get in and out through those tunnels? Then, or were they using them just to sort of see what it was like to be in a confined space? No, there's a pretend casualty and getting them out with a stretch and things like that. Really, not right. anything interesting. Okay. Ah, so um, all right. I'm just uh, seeing Toby. Rosie recognises your vo voice, but doesn't understand why you're not here. Oh, so that's my friend's dog. I got. <coughs> Sorry. I'm just doing my usual snuff. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, sorry, there. Uh, I'm going to blow your head off with my sneezy noises. But um, yeah, uh, oh, that's uh, very, very nice. Um, Rosie the uh, Labrador. Yeah, she wonders where I am. Oh, hello, Rosie. Rosie. Rosie, Rosie. Yeah, she's out there somewhere. Oh, she's a, she's a, she's a very friendly dog. Um, Labradors are always the best, you know, nice, friendly dogs. Friendly with everybody. Um, so uh, Dan from e EWF mentioned going to France in the boat. Yeah, that's right. Well, I did say um, maybe we'll have to put a challenge on, you know, like see whether we can get Dan back on the boat, but actually do something really crazy, like get to France on the boat. You know, I'm going to test the speed tomorrow. I'm going to find out how fast that boat goes. Um, I've been told a, a bullshit sort of figure of 40 miles an hour, which would make it bloody fast if it is. Um, that would be a very fast but little boat. Um, you know, you can get faster, but that is fast. You know, things can go very wrong in boats when you go in at those speeds or higher. So, um, yeah, uh, I've got Il Tomo 9411. Let me just see. It might look probably, um, Mr. Ah, oh, it's Mr. Tom from, uh, <laughs> I thought it might be another Tom then because I saw the glasses and I could only see this much of the face and I thought it might be my old Tom Tom Blandon friend but it's a it's a Tomo from derelict Plymouth unearthed he's yeah, there folks he's there there he is how yeah. you doing man yeah all right you very good thanks so have yeah. you come to tell us your tales of woe about um being on forums urbex forums uh I know, to be fair, I'll send the link and I thought I'll just join on. <laughs> oh, yeah, just everybody just wants to have a chat to Matt. That's what it is, yeah. Okay, well, look, I realise, and I, I don't don't get me wrong, I realise a lot of people don't like the drama thing, and it's easier to hide behind, you know, the names in the comment section because that's exactly what people do on the forums. Let's face it, yeah. I mean, they, they chat shit about people all day long, but they do it behind the you don't know who they are. So I un fully understand that, you know, bringing your face up and talking face to face about something that might get you banned. But then how the hell aren't you banned anyway on a forum? I mean, what, you know, is anyone not banned on these forums? Um, so, yeah, but OK, well, we'll all chat. Well, you, you should tell us by now. We don't give a shit down there. <laughs> yeah, they don't give a shit down there. If they're too far. They're too far south to worry about. Uh, you know, they never. nobody's ever going to come down that far to get them or harass them. Yeah. Well, yeah, there is that. But yeah. <laughs> well, you're looking very. Are you trying to like outdo me with your like uh, furry, uh, furry sort of, you know, top oh, no, you got this, on? Then this is my Chewbacca dressing gown, mate. <laughs> Chewbacca, yeah, right. Yeah. Does mate. it have a? Does it have a hood? Yeah, it has a hood. Go on. Oh, it is. It is it is as well. Look, I can see the the belt. I can see his. Uh, mm. I can. See I can see his belt. So we're both looking like uh, Asperger victims tonight, then. I mean, uh, you can't say that, can you, victims? No. Well, uh, not these days. Well, so I'm going uh, to go blackface, blackface in a minute. I'm going to do black and white minstrels, mate. I'm going to be all like, guess get back to the 70s <laughs> when jokes were funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm Chilling out a minute before I meet up with the other two from Daryl at Plymouth. Um, and oh. we'll let's see what we can do. I was going to say I was tempted with the idea of coming down today, but the weather's so poo. You know, oh, it was... absolute shite, mate. I just come ridden back on from work, and it was shocking. Yeah. So the wind. I nearly went flying a couple of times with that wind. Yeah. 
But ah, well, hopefully you get out to do something good tonight. But um, yeah, I mean, there's. I was thinking to myself, well, rain is good and bad. The rain and wind is good and bad because it's bloody awful to drive in, but it also hides your presence. So, like, people can't hear you. They generally won't be wandering around at night, so they won't, you know, just they won't stumble into you because who the hell would be crazy enough to go out on a rainy, windy night? Well, I to walk across that roof on the real cinema tonight. Mm. <laughs> you, you you wouldn't want to. No, I wouldn't. Not in this. I oh, wouldn't. No. Way. I was going to say. I I still want to go back and have a look at that place. You you you'd be lucky, mate. They've boarded it all up. I know, I know. But I, that's what I want to see. I want to see how much they boarded up and whether or not, you know, well, you can still get get in there via other means. You know, like well, different areas they've not thought of. The access point where we went in, that's been boarded up, and then. Yeah. At the Top of the stairs to go across the roof that's been boarded up as well oh yeah the, the door and then uh, the camera the the fake cameras that are there they've been pushed down again so someone's moved them so it looks like they're real but actually they're just dud ones yeah and we know this because we found the maker's mark and we googled it and they're fake <laughs> yeah yeah so and someone's been pushing them down and that Okay. So, well, so how long have you got before you go then? And uh, have we got any clues of where you're going to go tonight? But don't obviously say too much because you'll have uh, visitors with you otherwise. Well, that's nothing new for us, is it? To be fair, uh, every place uh, we go, we seem to have a visitor. Uh, uh, we're not sure yet. <clears throat> I'm not, not sure at all. Uh, I'm going to meet up with those two and we're going to see what's what. Um, if it's anything worth of interest, then yeah, we'll do it. If not, then we'll probably plan for something else. We've got a couple of things lined up for videos. So, cool. Well, I will come down and see you soon. Um, I've got I've got big plans that may happen this week for Thursday, which means I might be going to do something big until Sunday. So I might be kind of like urbexed out for a few days. Um, but then I would like to come down. But I am testing the boat as well tomorrow. So depending on whether or not the boat works out well, it might mean mm. whether I can come down and do some crazy stuff and show you the new boat. Yeah, I did yeah. see that. It looks pretty nice. What are you doing with your old boat? I'm selling it. I reckon you should donate it to Derelict Plymouth and Earth. <laughs> you can have the small one. Yeah. The, the big one costs too much money. <laughs> You know what they say, don't ask, don't get. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you know, we, we we could give you a good price on it, I think. That's, a, yeah. that's well. the best best we could probably do. But, yeah, well, I'll just give you £2,000. Yeah, let's just do it, man. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah mate. Help yeah. out the poor. <laughs> that's right, yeah. I could give you. I could donate you an, of an old video camera rather than put it on for 60 quid because it's worth a lot more than that. But 1080 camera. I got that it's going to get get 60 quid if I put it on eBay because that's the sort of going rate for these little cameras with zooms on it. You know, I'll um, I'll have to. I know one of them's watching the stream now, so you know who you are, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so well, I'll have a chat with him about it, see what he says. Okie doke, but All yeah, right. yeah, if you've got somewhere well, as well with boats, if you've got somewhere to store it because it's fairly big, so you know. You yeah. need to have somewhere where people aren't going to just slash it up for fun. Well, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, but yeah, destroy your dreams with one Stanley knife. Yes, mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, let's have a look what people are saying in the chat then, and uh, let's let's start asking questions. So, right, come on, start telling us in the chat then your horror stories. I'll I'll tell you mine, but then we'll have some things to go across in the in the chat area. And let's see whether anybody's been doing um, – um, what's Dennis? Did not see Sam and Jess. Hi, if you guys are here. Uh, I doubt they'll be on you. I get that feeling. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they will be. Yeah. Because they'll be worried that things will get said. Hmm. Uh. As you do, or as I do, rather. Can't yeah. help myself. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, so, IKS Steve is on you. Wow. Uh, IKS Steve, are you interested in coming to stay on a fort uh, that's not a million miles away from you? 
Um, it's one of these sea forts. Are you interested in coming to stay on a sea fort? If you are, let me know, and I will tell you where and when, and you can come if you want towards the end of the month. So, yes, Mr. IKS Steve. So um, I was going to get in touch with you, actually. I did contact um, uh, Chris, and he's already been there. So that's a clue, because you probably know. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, the other, the, the, the little guy, um, he's just too busy with girlfriends and uh, and holidays at the moment. So yeah, uh, he can't. He's not. He's not doing much anymore. I see, he's just falling out of urbex. My God. Um, there we go. Uh, right. So, just just kidding. But uh, anybody sending anything through? Let's have a look. Right, um, Matt. I've got to go because I'm going to meet up with those two in a bit. All right. Okay. Well, nice to see you, sir. And How don't you? forget, everyone, get down to Derelict Plymouth Unearthed. Yeah, and uh, on YouTube, subscribe, like, all that we could do with your support. That's right, yeah. And he all needs right. he needs uh, somebody to come and uh, groom his uh, his um, dressing gown as well. So he needs his professional grooming service. If anybody's if anybody's down in Plymouth can help him out. No comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't really any yeah. of the matting in his hair or oh, do do uh, Wookies wipe their asses? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. The best person to ask would be George Lucas on that one, but I don't think he'd reply to you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Is it, I'm, I'm mixing my metaphors when I say he might have some Klingons down there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah okay. Just... <laughs> we'll catch but... you later then, man. Yeah, mate, no worries. Just let us know when you're next down, all right? Okay, will do. Try and all make right, it soon. Sorry. I'll try and make it soon. Yeah. All right, mate, no worries. All the best, yeah. Cheers. See you later. Right, so the, the theory behind this 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 thing because we're like uh half an hour in so i suppose we better start really getting there um is that i have and i and i understand a lot of other people have had really bad experiences with forums now i mean i'm you know people say like no drama no drama and it's like uh i think we've got rapid man coming in as well now i just add him to stream but he hasn't got his he hasn't got his camera on we'll see whether it fixes that are you there rapid man hello matt you're all right yeah, not too bad. You're yeah, not gonna you're not gonna show us your face. Oh fucking hell. Um let me talk this camera out then. Hang on. I'm gonna have to plug it in. You have to give me a couple of minutes. All right then. Well we'll let you do that. And um yeah, the basic idea behind this is um myself and others have had you know real run-ins with people who who have these forums, which you think are kind of supposed to be a group of like-minded people who are sort of uh going out there doing urbex exploring and want to share their photos and experiences. And, um, you know, there are sort of like, you know, warnings on the forums that, you know, like don't share locations and things like this, you know, but, you know, you, you sort of think, well, you can chat, can't you? You can talk to people and you can kind of, uh, you know, say a few things and it's like you fall, you fall foul of all these hidden rules you didn't know about. And, uh, you know, if your face doesn't fit and if you, like myself you already had a bit of a sort of like you were known in the urbex community you were known for who you were um they just took an instant dislike to me and uh decided to kick me off immediately off the forums and uh, this happened on uh 28 days later and um uh derelict places was the other one i think and i was just like you know well what's what's the what's the problem with these people and they were taking there he is mr rapid man hello Hello, how are you doing, sir? I'm a bit rough at the moment. You have to forgive me. That's all right, mate. Yeah, I'm. I'm a bit like yourself. Um, I've been exploring better part of fifteen years. Mm -hmm. um, I've been on the forums. You could say I started off on the forums since about two thousand and seven. Yeah. So a fair few years now. You know what I mean? Thirteen years. Oh, Tony's gone. Um. Yeah, it's a very clicky world. Very, very fucking clicky world. It is, right. isn't it? Yeah. Like you say, my face don't fit. You yeah. know, it's like... I met, I met, I met quite a few of the original explorers. Um, you know, like Nick Catford and people. Yes, Subterranean uh, Britannica people. People who actually put out books and, you know, are real proper researchers and, you know... Yeah, yeah. they're amazing. He's an amazing guy. Mm. He's an amazing guy, you know, and I got I got on well with Nick, with Nick, you know, and 
then obviously these forums come around. And they think they they think they're the, the 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 bees knees, don't they? The people who run yeah. these forums, they think that it revolves around them, and and it's like all about you know what they say goes. And that's yeah. basically what it was. Um, I joined up to the forums, I posted a few things, you know. I know I got a lot of was sarcastic comments. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, like oh, who does this guy think he is coming on into our world, giving his photos, yeah. like as if he thinks he's, pe people are going to like him, you know, and it's like, well, no, I'm just sharing my stuff. It's usually like, you know, you innocently share your stuff, and then people are just ripping an ripping you a new arsehole. And it sort of annoyed me, so mm. I, I didn't bother posting anymore, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I believe I've still got an account there, <laughs> but I, it's sort of, I just don't log on to it and i think yeah um, it's obviously if you know if you've been you've been doing it a while now you would have known dave wouldn't you that die hard dave what it's called no it die doesn't hard, really balance. die hard lover or something yeah um, i mean you could run the names past me I've, I've even forgotten the names because these people are so you know instantly forgettable apart from their antics i mean i can remember their antics but i can't remember who, what they called apart from one called Krella, who was a it was a right arsehole and I, I used to go with a guy called i think his name was skeleton key or something mm. um but i'm going back 10 years you know and um, but as you know in the last three four years there's been an explosion on the on youtube you know with, with loads of channels setting up and all these groups setting up and things, which is yeah. a great thing. I've got no issue with that, you know. Uh, but what I found with the, the 28 Days Later guys and all them sort of people, they're more on the photography side of things. <clears throat> when they see YouTubers making videos, it's like an automatic rivalry, you know, and, it's, and that's what I noticed. Yes, yes. I am listening to you. I'm just looking back at the comments. Somebody made reference to something there, and I'm like, really? Okay, I'm just trying to kind of reference it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, somebody's talking about Ridder Moon. Yeah, I wouldn't mind going to Ridder Moon in North Wales, but I mean, it's a bit it's a bit basic, but it is a bunker, but it's a bit basic, but they do trips from time to time. Yeah, um, there's... Uh, there's a few of these forums and uh, some of the people who run them as well. I mean, you, you'd expect that considering they have these kind of ideas of what you can and can't do, that they would be the pinnacle of kind of, you know, goodness and, and you know, sort of straight line, straight down the line sort of people. But then, you know, you find out that they, they like nothing better than to sort of, um, you know, ridicule people. And then, uh, you know, it's like a, it's like a game of tennis. Uh, one will have a go and then you'll get batted to the other one and back and forth and then you know when you dig like you know what, who are these people i mean what's their problem you find out like that they they like going down underground tunnels and sort of like taking their clothes off and, and posing in the nude and and doing either actual sex acts or simulated sex acts and, and posting them around like their group of friends in the forum and it's like so what is actually going on behind the scenes now people are going to say matt come on you know, you're just you're just saying that because you don't like these guys. Well, actually, I'm not because I've seen the photos. They're not hard to get hold of, and these people I can't even remember their name because I mean I'm I'm not I'm not in in any way interested in that sort of stuff. But I mean, you know, we're talking about um, sexual exhibitionism. Well, you say being, that being well, the background to this to these forums. It's a, there's like a this sort of thing going on in the background. Yeah, you say that about the sex side of things, right? One of the last times I was up at RAF Upward, uh, a lot of people know RAF Upward, you know. Um, I went to go into the guard building and this guy came out and he was like, you don't want to go in there for a little while. I was like, why? <laughs> They're doing some filming <laughs> and they could surprise you. <laughs> and I was like, okay, now I left them to it, you know what I mean? But like... <laughs> what's yeah. going on in there then yeah i mean so, yeah i can imagine I mean, so it's almost like a dogging session or something but you know i wonder who that would have been then would it have been you know somebody who's making an adult movie or would it have been somebody who wants to be oh, like yeah, in yeah, an yeah, adult yeah. urbex movie 
it, it, no, it involved nudie women. Mm. So, yeah, where, posing naked and stuff, I, I suspect. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I'm taking it now, right? I mean, because a lot of people have said, in, they're going in the comments, like, what? You know, because they're going like, you what? And it's like, so what? Haven't haven't you all heard this stuff? I mean, they, they think, like, I'm making this stuff up now no, just, to, just to have a go. <laughs> just to have a go. Like, you know, these people, I mean, I thought people knew about this stuff. I thought it was a well-known sort of thing that um, I don't, they obviously don't post it on the main forums, but, like, amongst themselves in groups, you know, like secret, secret sites, their forums, uh, they are chatting about this sort of stuff, you know, about, I don't know, well... I, d I don't know whether it's a uh, they like taking photos of women in bunkers and doing simulated sex things and you know, all this sort of stuff and or whether or not it's uh, more akin to like dogging or or like wife swapping or something like that you know what, what's that thing swinging you know I'm not sure whether it's like that well, but I, I think we, it's, I think it's just girls you know yeah. being having photographs done in derelict buildings you know. Right. I've, I've seen people at the same place with flash cars out the front taking photos, you know, and it's sort of with the like the background of the derelict building. Yes. And so it could be that sort. I don't think it's over sinister. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember seeing some sort of quite outrageous stuff and, and people were quite happy to show it to me because I think they were wanting to see my sort of like, you know, my shock sort of really that's those people and they're like yeah and they sort of pieced it, pieced it together for me and it's gone out of my head now exactly all the details and i don't keep copies of that stuff because i'm not interested in you know ultimately what they get up to is their business i'm not worried about it but it's just kind of i, I just say it's fight kind of interesting that these people who tell you that they don't want you talking about this and they don't want you doing that you know a bit control freakish and then they've got all this stuff going on behind the scenes you know like you'd think they'd get another forum somewhere and it would be like, you know, hidden away, but you know, they're doing it right under the noses of, of all their forum members, you know, people don't know what, what's going on. So I originally knew the old, the, the old 28 days later mm. and it changed to like what it is now, the new forum. And yeah, I noticed things changing then. There's a lot of idiots about, you know, Taking the piss out of every comment you make. Yeah, and it's just like, and that's why I, I didn't bother him. Didn't bother with it. Yeah. The the other one, derelict places. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That might have, that might be where that Krella came from. Sorry. Okay. And yeah. there's there's a couple of guys on there. I thought were quite friendly, quite happy. You know, I shared some information and things with them. Um, and there's a place up the road here behind me, um, an old forensic lab. Mm. And um, I've been clocking it for ages and it still had security, but I knew it was going to be sold for housing. So I was keeping an eye on it. So I sort of give someone a heads up and said, like, this place is going to be available soon, you know. And um, a few weeks later, posted up all over the forum was pictures of this place. Mm. And I was like, well, I was planning to be one of the first to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and next thing you know, it's all over the fucking forum. Yeah. And I was like, that's a bit fucking naughty. Yeah. So um, I, I, so I don't bother with them no more. Well, I suppose, you know, everyone treats this information like as if it once it once it's said, it's public. That's the way people look well, at it, no, isn't it? It's done in private. It's done in the private chat. Yeah, well, that's a bit. That's a bit rude, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, if they're going to do it, they'll. You know, if they're going to give you a call, it, give me a call. I'm round. I'm hundred yards away. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing that freaks me out because I mean, like, uh, you know, no names mentioned, but I, I mean, I've had problems with uh, people I've gone ex on explores with, and you know, they're at, they're sort of chatting about things they'd like to do, and you're chatting about things you'd like to do. And they're clocking it like you know they are clocking what you're saying and um some of them actually went and did some of the things that i planned to do but didn't invite me you know yeah, so i didn't, I didn't get the same you know scenario. yeah and and it's like you know and then and then they, they're telling me how good it was you know and how amazing it was and i'm like really but how many times have i taken you guys out you know taking you in the car taking you places and like then i'm finding out that you've been to places i wanted to go to but 
I couldn't get around to it or, you know, needed to share a car, needed a few people to go with because they're like a bit dangerous to go on your own, you know, and it's like, and then I find out you taking your mates, you know, and it's like on the idea I gave you on something that you would never have known about if it wasn't for me telling you and you've gone and done it, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, uh, it's, it's a piss take, you know? Yeah, that's what annoyed me big time. Big yeah. Time annoyed me. And the handful of people I sort of connected through. Mm. Um, I sort of cut ties. I was like, well, you know. But you know you can't trust these forums, right? I mean, from a point of view of um, there's people reading your private messages. They're not private. The people well, who run those I forums did, I did are suspect that watching. I had that sort of capabilities, yeah. Yeah, they're watching everything. They're, they're sly, you know. I mean, if I ran a forum, I would never want to even run the software that would allow me to spy on what people are doing because I wouldn't want to do it. I think it's just rude. But if you look at what, you know, if you look at these platforms, I mean, some of them have never been heard of. It's like, you know, powered by blah, blah software. And you think, well, where's that come from? And you know, you can't buy this software. You can't get it. Where's it come from? Oh, it's custom made, isn't it? It's custom made because these control freaks want total custom ability to actually go in and watch what you're doing, probably hack your computer whilst you're there. Yeah, sort of you know what I mean? And everything. You know, they know everything. They've got they're looking at your password. That's not going to be encrypted. They know what your password is. They'll probably be trying it to see if they can get into your emails. I mean, these are not exactly you know, they're not the nicest of people. And I just think that people should be careful on these forums, to be perfectly honest, because I, I go pre-forums. I go like text chatters, like modem-based text chatters where you could dial in and chat and things. And the, the shenanigans that used to go on there were absolutely outrageous, you know, with people like listening in in private rooms and you're chatting to somebody about something. Suddenly you've got the, you got know, the owners come into the room and he's going like, what are you talking about? Yeah, you bastards. And it's like, excuse me? It's like, you know, and then and then I feel obligated then to go out and warn people. You know, I've actually gone on bloody warpath about it and just like warning people, don't go there because you know you're gonna get you're gonna get shafted around by people who are tapping into your conversations. That's naughty, that is. Mm. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very, yeah. I'm very paranoid about what I join now. You know, yeah, I have been for a long time. And this is the thing, Sim. I mean, you've had a private conversation there. Did you know the people who went to the place? Because was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. They you knew them. Up. Yeah, I knew. Them. Yeah, because I mean, I, I mean, it, I wouldn't have been at all surprised if it was me chatting about something secret like that, and and then somebody else goes. It was like you know, who's what, who's listening? You know, that would have that wouldn't have surprised me. But no, in, in that case, then it but was he just did, he did take like half a dozen people with him. You know, <sighs> and I was just like. And the place got trashed in the end. It fucking proper trashed. Oh dear. And this was a home office forensic lab. Right. Place, when it first done, when I first see the pictures, the place was obviously mint. It's like they walked out and locked the door, you know. Yeah. And um, within within a couple of months, the, the kids are in, and the place was getting graffitied and smashed up. All the windows are broke, you know. The usual deal, yeah, the usual deal. But um, why is the place didn't go up in flames? That's what I was waiting for. Because, like I say, I lived about a hundred yards away. <laughs> I was just like, I was waiting for it to go up in flames. Waiting, so you could you'd, you'd be the first person to ring the bloody, you know, the police then and uh, the fire service because you'd see out your window. Right, I'm gonna have to be very unprofessional and say that um, I need to go and uh, let's just say. Get another beer from the fridge. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So, uh, if you want to, if you want to, like, uh, chat to people, by all means, do. I'm just right, gonna it is in the chat. I'm gonna listen. It, it, so you right, have control. Right. You have total control. Be back there. Who do I know Who in the right? chat? Where's Ashley? Hi Bristol, got another people, another person from Bristol. Big shout out to exploring, exploring with Kim and Dan. Uh, big up to Kev. Been exploring with Kev a few times. He's a, he's a cool bloke. 
Oh, Dennis. Yeah, yeah. He was a river guide for 15 years. Yeah, I was, I was kayaking for better part of 25. Yeah, these comments are going too fast for me to read. <laughs> I don't know how Matt does it. Yeah, big up from Suffolk. Um, I'm okay, Ray. Cheers, mate. See, I'm not. I'm not. This is like the first time for me, guys. <laughs> I don't go on streams that often. Springs. Spring. Yeah, I, see, I, see got, I see you got a new boat, Matt. I have, yeah, yeah. I got a new boat. I got, I got the old dog though. I think I have to be upgraded at some point. That, that the old dog. Yeah, just upgrade it, trade it in. Is that was that a centre console? It is, one? yeah, yeah, yeah. Have I got any uh, pictures of it? I'll just show I people. Think I'll see, I think I see something. What you posted? Yep. Let me yeah. see what we got. Uh, yeah. Let's see if I can show people. I could bring them up, but there we are. That's the sort of the new ish boat. Uh, can you kind of is that, see? Is that, an, is that an aluminium bottom? Uh, no, it's fiberglass. A lot of them are fiberglass with these ribs. But you, yeah, you sit in the middle, center console, engine on the back, electric start, electric tilt. So, which is, um, you know, you can obviously bring it, bring it up out of the water when you get close to shore. Um, without having to go back there and also you can change the tilt when you're driving so that you know you you bring the plane plane. that's right yeah so it it all means you know you're going to go a bit faster really uh because with my old boat um if you want to what size engine you got on it it's only a 25 but it's a smaller boat smaller boat lighter yeah what what, how long is it uh it's 4.2 Two or three, four point two meters. Trying to work out, I'm trying to work out what it is in feet. Uh, well, it's times three, so it'll be twelve, four point two, three. So it should be thirteen feet. Thirteen, fourteen feet. Yeah, yeah, that should go quick enough. Yeah, yeah that should go quick. Enough. I think forty is probably a bit ambitious. Um, because what happens is with most boats and it's. The hull is only designed to, for a certain sort of speed. Yeah. Once you, hit, once you hit that speed, it'll start pulling back on itself and causing drag. Yeah. So, um, yeah, twenty five on twenty five horsepower on that would be about right. Yeah, I mean, you know, the engine stays on it as well, which is just a godsend because um, I was doing it like put the engine on, which when it was a ten horsepower, I could lift it, you know, one ha- hand and walk with that engine. When it's 40, you know, to get it in out of the car, you need two people. You've got to, you've got to lift it and you've got to like weight put, like as if you're doing weight lifting, like lift it onto the boat, you know, and it's really, really strenuous to do it. And, you know, the thought of having to get it on and off is a pain in the ass, but you do it because the fun on the boat is so much. But this one is just rigid now. The engine's on the back, lives on the back. You just wheel it into the water and just press start. That's it. And off you go. Yeah. So See, I've, yeah. I've been into boats for many years, you know. I've got a little dinghy as well, mm. so, but it's still sitting in the shed. I've not used it for a couple of years. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, so I'm going to be getting rid of the, the the other one because I don't need it. But um I mean, it's been good fun, but it's just so big. It, it's designed for you to take like six, seven, eight people, you know. And when I when we we go out with five of us on there, there's four other people and me at the back. I mean, there's still room, you know what I mean? There's still plenty of room to get more people and bits and pieces on. But no matter how many people you get on there. It's never really going to get up much speed, like much more, you know, much more than about 10 to 15 knots, 15 at pushing it. And you can you can screw it to the wall at 17, but it, it's kicking and, and it's not happy. You know, it's um, yeah, it's just it's like hitting a wall of drag, basically, you know, at that point. So 
Um, this has got the V hull, so hopefully it'll be a bit quicker. Yeah. But um, yeah, well, I mean, you're you're well into your uh, your sort of uh, kayaking and canoeing, isn't it? Because yeah, I used to be. Yeah, yeah. I used to be. Oh. I was an instructor for many years. Wow. Um, well, I was, I was kayaking 25 years since I was about 12. Yeah. And I quit when I was about 32, 33. Yeah. For Urbex? <laughs> no, I had some health issues going on. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it was holding me back. So, you know. You had a good innings, though. Sounds like you well, had, a good... I had a good time. Cut good the time. Yeah. Done all the big rivers in Wales and stuff, all the creeks and stuff. Yeah, and going yeah. and you know flipping yourself uh, uh, over and then re writing yourself with a yeah, <laughs> yeah, and all that stuff. Is you know it's like you know like places like you know like Swallow Falls and stuff. We I done that when I was like seventeen. It's like a group of us done that quite a few times, um, and Conway Falls and places up north. Mm. Right. Oh, I forgot to press this button, didn't I? Hang on, there's a button here. Yeah. Oh, doesn't it? Doesn't it store them? Oh, hang on, it's because I've not done it before. Let me say, all right, okay. So it's um, me at the matthewwilliams.com. Hang on, so PayPal um, and email is da -da 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 -da, me at matthewwilliams.com. Right, there we are. So, um, unless, should we put the Facebook page in there? I'll, I'll put a Facebook page in there as well so they can get to that. Although it's bloody big, so I'll put that in there. And then it'll scroll across the bottom of the screen because the, um, the very kind uh, the very kind moderators keep putting all the information in there for people. And uh, Facebook's being slow. Come on, here we go. Here we go. Come on, come on. Right, it's not a very easy to remember one, so you'll just have to click it um or search for it on uh i tell you what i'm going to go facebook thing and i'm going to go with the secret vault i'll make them search for it because it's just too hard all the numbers it's got numbers and crap and gobbledygook let me just put it in as um da -da -da -da, facebook uh the secret vault in capital so people can find it that way. add banner scroll across the bottom of the screen Da ding ah doesn't it scroll then? It's supposed to scroll across the bottom of the screen, it says. Oh, scroll across the bottom of the screen. There we are. Save. Show it. There we are. Oh, it's a bit a bit crappy, but whatever. It's better than that. I'm having to retype it in the uh, in the chat thing all the time. Oh. So right, I mean the thing the thing with me, what what pissed these people off um a lot, I think, on this uh uh, you know, 28 days later and stuff like that. It's because I was I was quite well known in in some respects because I used to be on like doing TV programs and appearances and uh, writing for magazines and things like that. And I, I mean, it was all about UFOs and it was like about getting into places, you know, underground places and getting chased out and you know, firing shotguns behind us and stuff like that. And you know, it was just sort of uh, telling people the stories of things we were doing, but. So I must have been known to these people. And when I came on there, they would like taking the piss out of me going like, oh, you're tin foil, tin foil hat man, you know, seen any uh, little green men lately and all this. And I'm just like, well, there's no need to take the piss, you know, just because I'm interested in UFOs. I'm not telling you like, you know, what to believe in. I'm just sort of like, I'm interested in similar things you guys are, you know, with the, the bases and stuff. And they were just like, they wouldn't le they wouldn't let, let it lie. You know, they were just like, ridicule ridicule and then it was like they were looking to pick they were picking 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 you know to yeah, till... that's what i found that's exactly what i found so i posted up a few things and you know put a bit of history behind it and stuff and oh. you've got people saying no that's wrong this is wrong that's wrong and it's like well it's not <laughs> mm. you know what i mean it's like it's not yeah i, I, I know the place you know yeah I mean, I've been banned from Wikipedia for life for saying that it investigated UFOs, which it did, because we've got it. We, we've got it from uh, the Public Records Office. We've had letters from the MOD. We, you know, people have written about this. It's been on television programs. It's been well explored. The fact they did that, but they would remove all this information off Wikipedia, 
And if you put it on there and put references, because you have to reference your sources, like it has to have been in a book or a magazine or a publication, periodical, journal, whatever, you have to reference your sources. So I'd reference my sources and say, this place used to investigate UFOs as per, duh, 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 and it would just be stripped off. And you, you go like, well, hang on. And you'd argue it in the back channels going like, well, hang on a minute. It did used to do this stuff. And they were like, no, it didn't. You know, we know because we used to work there. And I'm like, well, if you worked there, you'd know because I was told by the MOD, would you like to see some letters? It's like, no, ban for life. <laughs> Lifetime ban off Wikipedia. Boom. Well, you know, you know one thing. If they did work there, they wouldn't be telling you. Well. <laughs> the I mean, it's like the truth, the, the, these truth, the, the truth police. I call them like the truth police because they they're acting like as if they're sort of working for a you know a really good cause like Wikipedia and telling people stuff, but they're they're just omitting and blanking out and and redacting history, you know, by not letting you know what really went on or things they would rather not you know people so this know. Is, this is why the Cold War stuff really interests me. Mm. because like world war ii stuff you learn that at school you know everyone knows about world war ii you know and world war one but what they don't tell you about is the cold war yeah because obviously it's surrounding it a lot of secrecy weren't they yes but now after the 50-year rule a lot of stuff is starting to drip out uh, including experimentations on humans and you know all, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> There's like all sorts of weird and wonderful shit's been going on. And yeah. it's like yeah, they didn't teach us this, and that's what interests me, you know, it's all the secret side of things. Yeah, like, and I mean I'm I'm always fascinated when they say things like, oh, you know, Hitler was a bad guy. Obviously he was a he's a bad guy, but you know, he was a bad guy and we were the good guys, you know, and he was doing terrible things and concentration camps and 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 hurting people and uh, and it's like and then you find out that our government was putting viruses into villages to see which people would become ill so they could find out how the virus would spread and they wouldn't tell anybody about it. And if you get ill and you you become, you know, impaired or the rest of your life is screwed because of some illness that you needn't have had because it was spread by the government as part of a secret experiment your village was picked you know bad luck you know and this sort of stuff was going on and then you go but the public would like to know about that and they're like oh well you know we can sort of tell you a bit now but some of it's under a hundred year rule it's like yeah i bet it is because <laughs> that must be they're literally taking children out in the woods and sort of like you know putting them through a cheese grater type you know material you don't want us knowing about yeah because i mean like what else could there be you know like you're experimenting on people how bad well, can it be you know with the issues going on at this present time it makes you wonder <laughs> so, yeah it's, uh, it's something not right about all this stuff you know yeah, you know, they planned all along to kind of know know enough about viruses that they can send one out that they know is not going to kill everybody, but it's going to kill a lot of people. And I, you yeah. know, you know, is there a plan behind that? And like, said, and you, like you said, in the government, the government in the past has infected villages with viruses to see what happens. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This could be like an international thing going on. Yeah. And because I mean, they've shared they've shared all their secrets from places like Port and Down. They've shared them with other countries, and they even send them out samples of live, you know, live viruses. They go like, "Oh, we've got this new thing. It's really dodgy. It's the most dangerous thing on the planet." And then you get all these like labs around the plate, you know, the planet, going like, "Oh, can we have a copy of that?" And it's like, "Oh yes, but we'll have to send it in a very secure parcel." But here, yeah, have it, and they send it all out around the world. To all these, hang on, didn't you just say that was the one that was kill us all in a couple of weeks if it got out? <laughs> Let's just send it out then to everybody around the globe. Here you go, then boys. Then Have it gets fun. reproduced and it gets manipulated. Yeah. So everyone's got it, and then they're all playing with that one. It's like you know who's got the. It's like you know who's got the latest Xbox game. It's like well, who's got the latest virus? Oh, well, I've got the latest one. Oh, can I have a copy of that? Yeah, sure, sure. Pirate it out. Like yeah, here you go, boys. And then it's like next thing they're hacking it, and then it's on steroids, and you know somebody somebody could decide to release it and then that would be end of humanity on planet earth as we know it yeah i think it's just very very strange how it's gone mm. nothing adds up and it's sort of and they're wondering why people coming out with conspiracies and it's like well we're going to 
because nothing adds up. Yeah. Uh, it seems like people, you know, crave power are usually the psychopaths and the ones that would just do anything because they don't care. And uh, then you hear about all these stories of how, how the government has legitimately done all these experiments over the years. And you think, well, hang on a minute. You know, our what, our government would do stuff like that? They just don't oh, care, yeah. you know? It makes you think, doesn't it? Makes you think, yeah. If they, so, lose, if they can lose a few people to make a lot of money, well, that's what they'll do. Hmm. So Alison is saying she likes my stuff. There are people that I have seen who try and use this for money, and they will they they think that they can set the rules. Are there any rules? Um, well, I think when when it comes to urbex, I hear a lot about these rules of urbex, like a code of urbexes and a code of honor. And there's this kind of thing. I mean, I, I hear it bandied around a lot. Like, um, uh, what was it? Take only pictures, leave only footprints. You know, I leave only footprints, take only pictures, you know. So it's like, uh, that's that's a fairly, you know, understandable kind of moral ethic about urbex. But it's like, you know, who makes these ethics and who makes these morals and who decides what's right and what's wrong? They've been, they've been around since I started, you know, mm. in that phase, leave only footprints, you know, sort of, that's always been around. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's it's a good thing, you know, but but like to, to then turn around and say, well, you can't tell anybody where these places are. And it's like, well, that doesn't make sense because you've got organisations, I mean, very highly respected organisations like Subterranean Britannica. Oh, yeah. You know? And I mean, they tell people where these things are because it's part of history. You know, to include it would be like trying to write a book about, you know, Nazi Germany, but saying, but we can't tell you where Germany is. We can tell you everything that went on there, but we can't really help you to get near there, you know. Um, you know, oh, there's bunkers in Germany or there's bunkers in Belgium. Oh, yeah, we can show you photos of them, folks, but we can't really tell you where they are. And it's like, yeah, but there's a book here that tells me where they are. Oh, no, 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 we can't do that. You know, and they act on the very flaky secret side to things, you know. And yeah. So this is some of these other rules, you know, that they kind of like... And then you look on the forums, they tell you, you can't tell people where these things are. So you go, okay. And then you're going through the forums. It's like, well, here it is. It's telling you on the forum. And then there's people saying, can you tell me how to get in there? It's like, yeah, you do this and you do that. And this door's been locked for a while, but if you go around the back, you'll be all right. And you're like, but I thought they said I couldn't talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you talked about it, you probably would get banned. But you, you see all this contradiction going on because on the one hand, you get booted for doing what, that you see written on the forum. So you go, well, they're talking about it, so it must be okay. And it says in the rules, don't talk about it, but it says here how to get in there. So <laughs> surely it must be okay. But if you do it, you get banned. If they do it, they don't get banned. Hmm. So it's one of those, as you say, clicky, clicky. You don't know when you're crossing the line. And when you cross the line, they don't even want to, they, it's like apologies, you know, you, you're like, I, I grovel before you, please, please, you know, and it's like, that's not good enough for them. They, they just want to kick you when you're down. And it's like, if you tell them like, well, screw you, mate, where's the rule book? I mean, you know, you can't just be like that when it's all over your forums anyway, ban. So if you shout at them, ban. If you grovel in front of them, ban. It's like, there's no, there's no solution with it, you know? So I, I want to hear people's horror stories. Come on. Come on, you must have had horror stories. Well, I've, just, uh, I've not had, like I said, I had loads of sarcastic comments and just mm. gen rudeness, you know, and I just didn't bother after. Um, but I do know of people who have been heavily trolled because basically they're YouTubers, and that's all the bottom line is. Yes. I mean, Dan Dixon has had it in the neck from uh, people on 28 Days Later. That's why I decided to do this tonight is because somebody actually, see, it's not a day goes by without somebody trying to uh, wind me up. Um, and I'm not going to name any, na uh, mention any names, but, uh, you know, I, I do, I do like to know what people are on about, but, you know, all I can say is that if you go back 10 years on the forums, right, I was booted out. Now, I'm just tempted. I'm just tempted. Uh, I, I can't. We'll bring it up on screen because it'll probably well, do. I, me I, just, I just tried to log in. I've not logged in there for years. Yeah. And I, I can't get in. I can't. It's telling me 
my passwords wrong. Or it don't yeah. Up. And it's like, well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. I was going to say I've probably got more subscribers than they have on 28 Days Later. Now, the funny thing is they've been going for 10 years. I've only been ramping up my Urbex stuff properly. See, it's, going, it's been going a bit longer than 10 years. They had another forum before that. And it reset everything, did it? Yeah. 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 So they got 70,000 members. Now, the funny thing is, right, most of those members are going to be multiple fake accounts because... When you get banned, you end up creating a fake account in order to get back on because then you've got to tone down what you're saying and pretend like you're nobody. They don't like people coming out of the shadows. They don't mind as long as you're just a nobody. But they don't want you to become active and become quite interesting, an interesting person to chat to or you've got something to say or you're, you're quite proactive, you know. Then you 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 put your head above the parapet, and you know you're going to get it shot off, basically. So what I would say, I also found because obviously mm. I did a few, I did I did actually do a couple of explores with some people, and then mm -hmm. they came from obviously came off 24, 28 days later, um, and it was a case of how much did your camera cost. You know, this cost me four and a half grand. And it's like, well, I'd never spend four and a half grand on a camera. <laughs> so, oh, you know, my camera's probably worth 100 quid. Mm. And you can see them with all this kit, and they're obviously serious photographers, you know. Yeah. Then they, then they see YouTube videos of people going around with a mobile phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, this is an off. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. that's what I think that's our, I think that's the gripe with it. Yeah, yeah. with these these guys. Um and, and quite often as well is not like yourself, you you know, you you've got a lot of history and background behind places. But you get some people who do explore and it's like, oh this is an abandoned factory or an abandoned building or whatever. Yeah. But what was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean it's like there's no history to it. There's no nothing. It's just an abandoned building. Yeah. And they I won't, mean, and they won't yeah. put the history down because yeah. if you put the history down, you know where it is. Yes. I mean, no names mentioned, but um, I'm going to be very vague as well, yeah. But, I mean, I took uh, a load of people to a place and I explained what it was to them. I explained it in graphic detail what it all was to them. And somebody that wasn't there on that day came there on a different occasion he must have looked at my video and gone oh okay and he went there and he literally that's all he did he just said well i'm here today at blah and then just walked around that was it and it's like so any context for that at all that's it. you've got to have some context I think. you know might as well just be the local chip shop down the road like i mean you know it's it's a building it's got lights on or it looks abandoned and yeah what. Well, so and and so yeah it's, it's just bizarre that some people don't sort of like try to look into the background of these these places at all um i mean i like them for their aesthetic value even if i don't really know fully what they did and i love trying to work out what they might have done and then going to check later on to see if i'm right and it's almost like a game it's like a, it's like a guessing game like a seeing if you can guess the answer you know before you go and look for the answer because if i if I went and read up on the place when I was there, obviously it would sound like I'd be going, well, in, you know, 1871, this was created by Alexander, you know, Williamson who, with his family who were from blah, blah, blah. And I'd just be reading out a memory of what I'd read on a thing. But I think trying to work out what's this thing in front of me, you know, what is that, you know, and, and, and how does it connect and has the building changed? Are they ch totally altered it? You know, is, can you see alterations and how would it have been? And, you know, and things like that. I think it's kind of fascinating to kind of work it out and then go and the see if you're, the right, if you're right. The whole thing with, you know, all the, what we do is for the history of things. Mm. And it's like, if people are just making a video with no history, no background to it, it's just, what's the point? Yeah. There's no point to it. Plus, I mean, you know, I don't mean to diss people for trying, you know, but I mean, like, you need to have a phone on a gimbal or 
on a tripod holding the tripod so that there's a little bit of weight there so you're not going whoa, oh, whoa. You know, I don't spend money on this stuff you know what i mean yeah um, but i've just brought myself a new stabilizer gimbal thing mm -hmm. um it's uh yeah and it only cost me about 60 quid there you go. Yeah, it doesn't uh, have to be expensive, but it makes a massive difference. I mean, we didn't have this stuff years ago, so people could justifiably say, "Well, they didn't exist." And I got myself a cheap GoPro um, to, to go on it. Mm. I've not actually, well, I've not actually used it yet. I'm going out this week to use it. Hmm. Oh, somebody said he watched Threads when it came out, and he was about eight. I was too. I was quite young when I watched Threads, and he said it it seriously spoiled my outlook on life. I used to go to school every day, and I was expecting a nuclear bomb to drop. I was literally walked to school in fear that any moment now it could happen because that's the way it was put across. It was so realistic that Threads. It, it sort of it really did screw my head up for a while until. I just learned to kind of, it's like shell shock, really. You kind of just learn to kind of, uh, you just put it to one side, like as if it, it doesn't matter anymore. It's like every day well, you go. Down the road, when I was a kid, mm. uh, and I, I, obviously when you're a kid, you don't know what's going on. But like about once a month or something, you could hear, you could hear the siren going off from, from, from the school. Yeah. Or the um, fire, fire brigade used to do them, didn't they? yeah yeah and um obviously finding out now they tested the the network for the yeah nuclear warning yeah and they did it once a month but they don't tell anybody they're testing it so it could be the real thing i've yeah. heard it and thought like you know what next sort of thing what's just about to happen you know oh shit and uh, thank you, Mimi Paleo, for your donation, by the way. Thank you. This was back a while back. I'm just scrolling through the messages, but thank you. Um, but, uh, yeah, so Baz is saying, how old am I, Matt? Um, well, I would do the uh, go on and guess in the comments, but I'll save you the thing. I'm 47 years of age. So, mm. 43. 43? Yeah, and I had a hard paper around. You had a hard paper around. <laughs> well, it sounds like you didn't have the paper out. You were bloody, uh, just, you know, stressing yourself out with all the old uh, canoeing to the max, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I was quite obsessive with it as well. Mm. You know, when I was competing, I was training three, t three days a week and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I was, it was what I wanted to do, you know. Mm. I, did, I did fuck all at school. Mm. I just told him straight, you can't teach me what I want to do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And as soon as I was 16, when I was obviously when I left school, I was 16, and I passed my junior instructors about three weeks after my 16th birthday. So I was like a junior instructor. And when I got to 18, I went obviously I went for my senior instructor. And a few years later, they changed it all around, and now they call it coaching. <laughs> um, and I was a coach level four when I finished. You know, I used to, I used to coach the, uh, some squaddies in the army and stuff as well. We mm. um, used to have to put them through their paces. <laughs> it's like we've got some rivers up in North Wales, like the River Twering, um, near Lang near Bala. And um, I'd have to take a group of squaddies down there. And their sergeant would blatantly tell me, make sure every one of them swims. <laughs> make sure they're all freezing their bollocks off at the bottom. <laughs> you know, it's all... all right. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, good old days they were. Yeah. Yeah, they do like punishing the uh, people in the army, don't they? Yeah, yeah they did. <laughs> Yeah, I, got, they... I got paid to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah they, they sort of like uh, make them submit into uh, in, into sort of uh, authority. So yes. Um, so young man, Mel, uh, young man Matt, don't look a bit over thirty. Does does he bless him? Oh well, that's kind. I didn't even read the whole of that before I realised what you were getting at. But yeah, um, I used to skip over the middle drain so I didn't get bad luck. 
Yeah, I used to, I, I remember like uh, when I was bored, it was all because I believed it, but it was like bored. And it was like, so when I was walking, I was always like walk on the um, the cracks in the pavement. So it'd be like, you know, you sort of walk and then your feet would go out and I would just do that. And it was almost like as if it wasn't bad luck, but it was almost like pissed off if you got it wrong. You know, like you could, you just had to get your feet on all the cracks, like, you know, so it was staffed really in it. But um, yeah. Uh, it's what you do when you're a kid, isn't it? Yeah, it's what you do, isn't it? Yeah. Um, TNMT, thank you. She said, I'm good looking. Wow, thank you very much. Yeah, you're on the Christmas card list. Uh, Jackie, uh, Dennis says, Jackie, is it the 27th anniversary of the 21st birthday? <laughs> All right, yeah. Um, Haunted Coachman says, wish he was as agile as Matt. Well, yeah, I don't know. It's a funny one, really. I mean, like we were out last night looking at a cinema and... Um, Alex King, who, if you look at his Facebook, he's actually it's him on the on the starting thing of a like uh, doing like a sprint. So he's actually on a proper thing with a guy there, you know, taking times. So obviously he is a fit bloke, yeah. And then you've got the other two of us. Now Alex could jump and grab onto the wall and lift himself up, but he is also quite thin, so it means you know he's got less weight to pull up. But um, like you know, I I can do that. I can swing my leg up onto a wall, but it's not easy to sort of do it other ways. But yeah, we, we were we were all swinging on ropes and getting down into things. So it's you know, it's it's I don't know if it's about agility. It's about willingness to do it. You know, yeah, that's that's ninety percent of it. I think and it's supposed to do it. Yeah, I mean because I'm not fit, but it's like I know I can swing on a rope, and I'm not going to fall off. I'm not going to panic and sort of let go and. Or anything like that, because I mean, the moment we got down through a hole, we we're on somebody else's rope that was made out of. Um, it wasn't made out of rope; it was made out of uh, flexi hose, you know, like um, garden hose. So they tied this off, and of course, that thing, that stuff stretches, you know. And if you're heavy enough, you could just like snap it. So, but it looked okay; it felt okay. But of course, you're going down into a hole, and you've got to drop down. So um, you put your foot on it, but of course, once you put your weight on it you go backwards and your foot goes forwards because it's like that's that's naturally what's going to happen so you've got to be prepared for that so it's not it's not that i'm agile it's just i know what's coming it's like you know but you don't let go you you get yourself at an angle where you know you're going to swing and you know you're going to go in like that and then you right yourself and then you drop down but you know you're going to get it it's just little things like that and not being afraid to kind of like grab you on and you go any climbing or anything Oh, mm, mm, mm. Huh? not really no but i did have a go the other day at um doing a uh, climbing wall with a rope on me and i was actually because i'm not good with heights but climbing up the wall i was actually quite agile and finding all the grips and, and you know climbing moving my feet climbing. yeah yeah climbing is cool i used to love it yeah, I mean, you know, you've got to, you've almost got to like, you know, do things that don't make sense, like get one foot under oh, another. Yeah. And then, you, think and then, that, you, you think that's not going to work? And yeah. You don't have to stretch a bit and, you know, turn and yourself then, inside out. Yeah, jump <laughs> a bit as well from one yeah, to the, to the bit next. Jump and, <laughs> you know, you can grab a, you can grab a handhold. <laughs> But I mean, with the, with the beauty of knowing that you're going to be safe because you're going to be, you're not going to fall. Uh, it's interesting to see what you can do that you didn't think you could do. But would I do that with a rope off? Nah, never, never in a million years. I'm I'm a total safety man. I I believe in you know definitely the odds being on your side. Hello, I got a moderator ringing me. Hello, moderator. Uh, okay. Okay, I'll do that now. Thank you very much. And that was, that was Donna, by the way. So Donna, the amazing moderator. Thank you. And um, right, I shall put the StreamYard link up. He wants to join. He must have something he wants to say. So let's uh, let's bring him on. There's the StreamYard link. Now, uh, yeah, just click on that. And uh, obviously, if anybody wants to come on, have your webcam because we, unlike the forums, if you want to come on, Gen in general, we do like people to show their face. But tonight, I suppose, if we know people are trusted enough by their names, but they don't want to have their faces on, uh, if they've got a good story to tell, we'll do it voice only. But if you take the piss, we cut you off. So, yeah, be warned. 
um yeah uh so let's see whether anybody wants to come on then right well there's nobody so far let's have a look what people are saying then um somebody says i need a 3d printer mm, yeah well 3d stuff's okay but it it doesn't well, i see what you mean for the for this boat boaty type stuff I suppose so yeah there's dennis hey mr dennis hey matt there he is i'm gonna bring up the chat you probably won't see me because i can't see my own camera this way i can let you know if there's anything going on there you answer. yeah we can see you and hear you so we got rapid man uh, I don't know your uh, name, actually. I mean, you might have told me, but Rapid Man, I'm not sure. Gary. Gary. Yeah. All right, mate. Oh, there. That's his uh, dog's squeaky ball. Oh, I'm right sorry. Up. I forgot. <laughs> his dog's got a bit of a, a unique problem. He's got a squeaky ball, you know. And uh, Dennis is uh, accepting donations to get that squeaky ball s sorted out, you know. But it's going to be a big vet bill. So, for the moment... Yeah. Where are you stroking him to get strange noises like that? He hasn't <laughs> touched the damn thing until I join the chat here. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, so, uh, Dennis, have you had any uh, strange experiences with these forums? I haven't been on them. I'm going to have to check them out. Yeah, you said you didn't really know what forums I was talking about. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, have you heard of 28 Days Later? And, no, uh, I have not. Okay, because like the urbex stuff we do, you know, which is obviously like going out exploring places, but there are some sort of like urbex Nazis, like purists, who say that, you know, photography is the way and, you know, you need to put your reports on forums. That's the real thing. And and I, I argue the toss against this because I, I say that I, I've watched these forums over the years and I look at the pictures and things and it's like, sometimes they look too amazing these locations look too good and it is down to the the skill of the photographers they've got really good techniques um and they know how to light things and then they go home and they photoshop stuff up so it looks you know hdr tones you know they make things look so amazing and then you know i think really you know what i like to do in my explores and it is partly because it would be impossible to fake the same stuff, fake photography like they do. They take a, an average bland photo and they make it look like something out of Star Trek, you know. And it's uh, you can't do it so easily with video. But the thing is, that's the good thing in a way, because uh, places often look very big, you know, in these photos as well. And when you go to them and you see them in real life or with video, you know, you actually walk around, you go, oh, well, I can see actually it's not, not as big as I thought it was going to be, you know. So things can be looking very impressive in photos. So my argument has always been, well, I look at these photos and, and they, they they make my mouth water. It is literally like, you know, sort of food for a hungry person. You know, you're seeing photos and you're going, that place just looks so amazing. I would travel halfway across the world to see that place. And, of course, if you went there, it would probably be like, Oh, it's actually quite boring, isn't it? It's, um, it's not quite like that photo. And you've got this idea in your mind. It's like watching a movie. You know, it's all very wow and great and polished. But the reality is it probably smells. It's small. You know, it takes an age to get there. It's a real hard slog to get to somewhere. And, and in fact, if you took photos of exactly the same thing, your photos are not going to look anything like those photos you saw on the forums. Now, all I'm, all I'm getting at here is that these forums, they big themselves up because they go, look at our photos. But the photos aren't entirely real. They're very, very good. But they're not necessarily exactly how it is, you know. And they give you a false impression of how things are. Um, great kudos to the people who can take those photos. They put, they put ideas in your imagination. But then I don't think there's a, an argument to be to be saying to people who do video and what we do as a kind of form of snobbery that the, what we do is invalid because it's just people with video cameras going around and, you know, and they don't do it the way we do it. It's like, well, I think there's a, there's room for everybody. I think there's room for photographers who want to do this like high art that they do. And then there's room for video, which is actually walking you right the way through it, like as if you're there and... You know, maybe putting a little bit of uh, voiceover so that you kind of and, and I think there's there's a different market for things as well. Like people who like photos like photos, 
and some people like watching video and they want, like watching television. Now, I can't read books anymore because they send me to sleep. I can't read web pages because they send me to sleep. But I watch YouTube videos all day long, you know. So if you're going to present to me these wonderful locations as photos on a forum, I probably I could have gone to places that are probably around me right here that I don't even know are there because I don't look at the forums because I just can't be bothered reading forums. And, uh, you know, so if somebody presents something video wise, I go, oh, yeah, I'll have a look at that. I'll click on that, you know, and just sit there and watch, flick through it. And then if it looks good, I'll watch the whole video, you know. Um, but it's a completely different discipline. It's a different sort of look. But these, these, you know, you know, what I call like, you know, forum Nazis, you know, they they act like purist urbexes, go and take photos and publish them on forums, not these like shitty YouTube videos. And I'm like, well, have you seen how many people are looking at these videos, you know, and how many people are watching them? And and if you look at how many subscribers they've got. And like I say, you know, fake subscribers, a lot of them, because they've all been booted half of them, you know, and they've had to come on under different names. I mean, I've probably got three accounts on 28 Days Later because I've been booted a couple of times, you know, and uh, and that was when it, even when I was trying to pretend to not be me and coming in from a different IP address, I still got booted. You know what I mean? So it's like then the third account is where I just go on there and I don't say a word. And that seems to be the only way you can survive. You just come on and just don't do anything, you know, just don't say or do anything then you might have a half chance of staying on these forums. So that's my that's my kind of point. That's my angst. But I, I think videos are, in fact, I believe videos are better than the forums. The forums are for the hardcore purists. But videos take it to everyone, you know? Yeah. So If you're a photographer, stay on the forums, you know? Yeah. <laughs> if you, you know, stop catfishing Matt with beautiful pictures. I mean, you know, I would be very happy to put um, people's amazing pictures in my videos, you know, but um, I think people would be going, is that the same place? <laughs> you know? Because it's almost like I'm oversexing it. And, you know, I, I do sort of like play with the, the thumbnails a little bit to kind of get people to go, ooh, you know, but there's this ooh factor is when people actually see what it's really like, they get disappointed. I would rather show them what it's really like and get them wowed on let's not let's not over sex the imagery here let's just show it how it is and then if you love it because of what it's like you may be not going to be so disappointed when you go there you know um you see a lot more on a video you know mm, a million pictures in a video as opposed to just 20 pictures on a forum it's like they can make up you know they can go to a location and post up 15 pictures that look amazing yeah and like you say, you, you only see a screenshot of each part of the place. Yeah. And and when you turn up and have a look at it yourself, you think, well, that was a waste of three hours driving. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, literally, they could put point in that way, and you go, wow, that's an amazing photo. They turn the camera 360 degrees, or, you know, 180 degrees, and they take a photo that way. When you get there, you think you're going to have loads of rooms, and it's going to be really big. And you, and you go, well, actually... This, all 15 photos are in the same room it's just looking around in the same room and there's, there's that's it there's, that's it there's, I've, I've i've done it all now i've just stood i've stood here and i've gone right i've done it now it's like the shortest the shortest um movie experience like you pay pay you one pound uh, you know pay well not pay you pay you 10 pound to go and watch a movie and they open the door the usher opens the doors so you go in and it goes da -na, da -na, na -na. They go, thank you, everybody, and then you leave. You know, and it's like that's your movie experience because it's like, what? It's over that quick. Wow. You know, I, I think the reality of like when you show things with with the videos, um, and that's why I don't like editing them as well because uh, I've done a little bit of journalism over the years, and I, I'm a I'm really into the idea of uh, recording somebody's voice and just transcribing it. I said, they said, he said, she I said, and I take out the F bombs and I take out the ums and the R's and the pauses, you know, but basically this is the conversation, ba -ba 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 you know, and it's like in context, the whole thing in context. So, you know, whereas if, if things are edited and don't get me wrong, I love other people's videos and I, I watch other people's videos, but when they edit them, I lose track of where I am. So, so you suddenly start to get to this scenario where it's like the photos. 
you don't know whether you're in the, what in the same room but the camera's just pointed the other way but it seems like two locations because they've cut and i'm like well where are they now and he's like i don't know and it's like well that looks good but but they obviously this is a huge place because cut 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 and it gives you i think the cutting actually exaggerates exaggerates how cool a place is because all you do is you go you go bang amazing bang amazing bang amazing bang amazing and it's like a stroboscopic slideshow of amazings but in fact showing the reality of what it's like i think with unedited not everybody's into it i gotta be honest i don't think everybody likes this this sort of stuff but i've asked the people who, who watch my videos you know would you rather me edit them down because i have done that in the past or would you rather the whole thing through and i think they're a bit uh ocd like me they want to see how every door and thing connects to every other door and then they build up a picture in their mind of how big it is how many steps it is you know and what's there whereas all this kind of like you know wham bam thank you ma'am click 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 i don't you know i don't get an idea of where i am i have to go there to understand what's really there because i didn't get it from other people's videos it's you know? like my videos because um i know fuck all about editing and stuff yeah i don't make videos generally i like mm. i like exploring i do videos but i don't really publish them you know mm -hmm. what i have done you get it how it comes you yes know, Get it's, it it's easier to edit like that. It's longer, it's longer, which a lot of people can't handle the file sizes and things like that, you know, because it's like and it's <laughs> hard on your computer, it's hard on your phone, and it's hard on your memory and all that sort of stuff. But there's a lot less to do, you yeah, know, because you're right. not trying to create a TV program, you're not trying to create this highly crafted TV experience, you know, which is cut down, but it's it's not it's not easy to create TV stuff because it's you got to know what looks good and what looks bad and you've got to blend music in and you've got to keep a pace going like a movement of pace you know and it's like oh so i prefer unedited and then you got you know you got the choice you could do it no speaking or you can chat as you go like amongst yourselves and have a bit of a giggle you know um and, and I choose to be the sort of like, I'll chat amongst the people who are there or to myself, you know, whilst I'm there. If there's too many people, it's often better to break away from the group so you don't yeah, get all yeah, the, the multiple voices, you know. But Yeah, try and keep it down, if you know what I mean. Half, you know, four or five people. Yeah. I mean, you can turn up with 20 people, but you have to say, like, I'm going over here. You go over there, and I'll, we'll meet you in the middle. And you, you cross. It's nice to cross each other as you as you're exploring areas and go. All right, yeah. How are you enjoying? Yeah, great. See ya. And you, you know, carry on. But I, I think you know, walking around in a group, it, it really does screw the audio up. Yeah, yeah. You can hear it in the backgrounds and stuff. Mm. So let's have a look what people are saying then. So come on, folks. I can't be the only one. Oh, they're all shitting themselves to talk about uh, slagging off 28 days later. I know that Dan Dixon's had real run-ins with them uh, because they hate him and they hate me. I was going to say they hate me as well. They when, when they kicked me off, I think they thought that was the last they would probably ever see of me. But since I've started doing like the YouTube stuff, I'm starting to get quite well known on the YouTube scene now. I mean, I was quite well known in ufology and those sorts of areas, but now I'm starting to get quite well known doing exploring, you know? And so now I'm reappearing on their radar. But the thing is now, they're actually putting things on their forums to like, you know, slag me off pages, like let's all have a pop at Matt Williams, a secret vault. And it's just pages and pages and pages of venom. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying reading it, to be honest, because it's like, I mean, wow. I, I can't. I would show it to you on screen. I would literally show it to you on screen, but they would then claim copyright of their forum and all that sort of stuff. But I can read it to you, but I can't just bring it up on a bloody screen, unfortunately. But uh, somebody, as I said, every day there's always somebody trying to troll me or wind me up. Yeah. So somebody sent this through, and they said, "What do you think of this?" Then, and I, and I just said, "Well, lol." Like you know, I mean, it's crazy. But I mean, let's have a look. What's the name of it? It's called Twenty Eight Days Later. Um, uh, the Secret Vault Hovercraft Museum, Portsmouth, and it's September the 15th, right? So, 
It's called Johnny Vaults. He's a full member, which I don't know if that means he pays him money. Um, and he says he's been watching The Secret Vault on YouTube for a while. Now, I notice people do this, right? You've got to realize, people, right, with me, I got a pretty thick skin because if I listened to everything that everybody was saying about me, right, I've been at this for a long time doing loads of things. If I listened to everything that everybody was saying, I would, I would not have a, I would not have a personality. I would just be like jelly. Yeah. I have to, I've had to like literally just say, this is me, like it or lump it. Right. Um, I'm, you know, be a bit of a clocks and okay. You might not like what I'm saying here, but I'm going to say it. Yeah. This is me. Yeah. If you don't like it, go and find another channel. You know, I'm really sorry, but, you know, because this is me, I'm not going to be completely altering myself all the time to meet what you want. You know, it's like, so when I read these things, right, this comment here is a classic because but because you see it a lot. What they're trying to do is they're trying to whittle away at you from different directions to get you to be what they want. But I can't do it. So it says, have been watching The Secret Vault on YouTube for a while. But how he reacted to getting caught in the act by the security at the museum, i.e. the Hovercraft Museum, is putting me off this channel somewhat. Yeah, so what they're saying there is, so you shouldn't be doing this on your channel, Matt. You know, you shouldn't be slagging off security guards and laughing at them and calling them fat bastard and oh, shit like that. Yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. But, but I don't do it all the time because even I think, like, I mean, people are not going to want to watch me doing that all the time. But every once in a while... I can see he's getting seriously wound up, but he won't climb over a small fence to come get us, but he's giving it all a... And it's like, oh, come on, eh, mate? Come on. Come on, you fat bastard. Climb the fence. Come on. Come on. I know you can do it. If I put a pass to you, mate, you'd be over that fence in a bloody heartbeat. You know, come on. Wish I had a pass to you on me. You know, and it's like, it's just, you know, it's just a bit of fun. It's a bit of fun. And, and considering he has actually got, not just, he's not slightly obese, it's what you call morbidly obese, fat gut that comes out goes under comes back up and then into his jeans and down you know where do you buy clothes like that even i mean where do you even buy clothes that would accommodate that much fat right, i'm sorry I'm, I'm 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 not really into this makes you wonder where he goes exploring <laughs> you know, it's, you're, you know. Not gonna, you're not gonna be climbing far are you yeah i mean you know he's well he's a he's a lorry driver so i think the yeah They've got these large seats with super suspension on them that can take about a 30 stone bloke. You know, I think that's the general idea of why they design those seats that way. Who's that, who's that guy then? Oh. What's his name? Oh, this guy, uh, he's called uh, something Johnny Volts. Now, the thing is, again, you see, that's a made up name because it's, is he real? Yeah. Is he real? Yeah, and he's mimicking your your name. In Johnny Volts, you know? Yeah, yeah he's, he's, yeah, he's. But Mock it says, corner. yeah, I mean, it's like, it's all about mocking, you know. So, um, Derelict TH92, he says he has a weak spot for staircases. Yeah, well, I do, because, I, I mean, you know, I do get a bit scared when I've got, like, spongy staircases that are going to go through. And it, it, it probably does add to the tension, but, I mean, like, sometimes, oh, yeah, it says blokes are moron. And they've got an animated GIF, which I didn't even know you could get animated GIFs like this, of somebody going like this. Right, blokes are moron. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, ju I, I just love how much people c can sort of like get out of bed to write this stuff. There's a guy called Mookster, um, and he says he's an absolute dick anyway. Just another goon in the sea of YouTube goons. Yeah, so it's like positive, constructive criticism there. You know, so he's a dick. He's a dick. Right. Well, so how would I not be a dick then? Are you telling me any positive ways that I could not be a dick or maybe I could, you know, do this or that? No, he's just a dick. He's <laughs> just a dick like the other dicks who are hanging around with the dicks and the fannies. And then when they're not hanging around with the fannies, they're hanging around with the arseholes. And the arseholes are, are interacting with the dicks who are, are totally within the fanny, fanny world. And it's like, right, mate, yeah, I totally understand what you mean there. Yeah, dicks, fannies, arseholes and wankers and bollocks and gifts going like this. Yeah, right. So you're really adding to the conversation, but it is entertaining. See, right. So um, chime in if you find any of this funny and want to comment on it, by the way. But yeah, um, Bikin Glynn, 
uh, says it's a bit annoying. Article keeps say saying they broke in, yet it sounds like they climbed, climbed over a fence. Ah, so he agrees with me. We didn't break in. We cl climbed over a fence. Yes. It says, still a moronic thing to do, though. Hang on. What? Climbing over a fence to get in is a moronic thing to do. It's 28 days later, folks. I hate to, I hate to break it to you, but do they literally just not climb over fences to go to explores. Oh, I was going to go and have a look at that bridge, but I had to climb over a three-foot fence. Oh, we'll have to go home now. Oh, but we've come 180 miles. Oh, but there's a fence. There's a fence. But there's no big one. Do you think we could climb over it? Oh, right. I'm sorry. Uh, we used to like you, mate, but now you're going to have to. We're not even taking you in the car back home. Climbing over a fence? What are you like, mate? What are you like? Go away. You're going to give us a bad name. Climbing over a fence. Really? Somebody wrote this. Somebody wrote this shit. This is an urbex exploring. And they're saying a bit mor moronic to climb. You know, sounds like they just climbed over a fence. Still a moronic thing to do. Like the comment. You know, I liked the comment. He says they could have just used the front door. Yeah, we could. We could have paid like the members of the public eight quid to go in. But. I just like going in there when it's closed because it's more exciting. And if you, you know, if you get chased out, so what? But that, you know, I'm I'm part of an urbex, you know, urbex sort of generation that watches Ali Law and people like that who think, you know, it's fun. It's fun to get in there without permission. Yes, they don't like you doing it, but security guards are paid money. That's their job. They are paid to secure these places. So you're only just waking him up, you know, and, and so they actually, oh, oh, somebody's actually trying to get in. Oh, oh, I better go and do something then about it, I suppose. I mean, these you people just walk around in boredom 99% of the time. You know, they've got nothing to do. They fall asleep over their desks, you know. It's like, oh, oh, somebody's there. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. You know, it's like, it's, they think it's a bad thing. Like, we don't do any damage when we go into these places. So what's the, what's the problem? You know what? Pure urbex. You see, the unwritten rule of urbex says you can't climb a fence. That's number one. And it's like you could have just used the front door. Oh, I see. So urbex says when they go to look at abandoned buildings, what they do is they go as far as a fence. Then they have to look up who the landowner is in the land registry. Then they have to contact the local council or the local, um, you know, la you know, land registry office to get the details to find out who they are. They go knocking on the doors of all the locals. Excuse me, you don't know me, and I might look a bit strange in my camera. Uh, uh, you know, but I would like to go in that house up there. And I'd like to know who owns it. Oh well, I don't know. We haven't seen him for years. Oh well, if you haven't seen them for years, well, I can't possibly go up there without getting permission. What the frig are these idiots saying? I mean, like straight off, we're in three comments in, and they're saying basically. I should have used the front door. I should have had permission. I can't climb over a fence. Seriously? Well, yes. there's also the bigger point you were trying to make, which was what they did with the uh, boat launch. Uh, the boat launch, yeah. The Daedalus, I'm trying to attract attention towards the, the thing, which is still ongoing. I mean, they, they are duck, ducking and diving, trying to tell me who owns that because they don't want to admit why they closed it. There's a reason, but they don't want to give it, you know? So they're ducking and diving now. Who owns it? Who did it? Who put the blocks there? What's going on? They don't want to admit it. I will get there. I will find it in the end. I will find that answer. And also, those blocks, mates of mine have said they're going to move those blocks. So they're going to have a rude awakening soon. Because if they don't own up to it, there's people I know who's got jet skis and they're going to move those blocks. Which is not, it's not destructive. It's just giving access to something that is a public slipway. It's listed on the council site as a public slipway. Well, so, I, I presume somewhere or another the local council taxpayers will be paying for that. Yeah. And the, do you know why I think they've probably done it? It's because it doesn't have a um, uh, machine for taking money, you know, to park. That's why, you know, because it's the only place that was free. So guess which one gets closed down? Yeah. Hmm. Right, what else have people been saying then? Should we have a look at some... Do you want some more fun? Uh, 
It, then there's a quote from the, the guys who run the museum. It says, Mr. Avery says if the explorers wanted to visit the museum, they could have just used the front door. He said, we're open Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and the entry only costs eight pounds. Well, yeah. And then somebody says, yeah, that sums it up. And it's like, so what? Hang on then. So 28 days later are saying that what they should do is pay to go in these places and take photos by paying to get in there. I know you can do it that way, but that's like me going to like an art muse art gallery in London. I can pay to get in it, and you know I can pay to go to watch a theatre performance. But you know what? Well, you Take couldn't do it that way because they've been shut down because of the virus, right? Well, yeah, there's the theatres ain't open at the moment, but isn't isn't part of the fun like you know actually exploring things that you 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 perceive to be abandoned. You don't always know if they're abandoned. You might get somebody wander up and say, that belongs to me, what you're doing here. But the perception is it's abandoned, you know, and and then you go, okay, well, you know, thank you very much for telling me. And, you know, I report, if, if we meet somebody who says this place, you know, you can't come in, I'll report that. You know, I'll say, well, yeah, well, we met somebody and they said, you're not supposed to be in here. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, okay. I could go on for hours and hours about this. Oddly enough, I bumped into him and a load of other goons whilst photographing a location in the south. They boasted about being on YouTube and asked if I wanted a sticker. <laughs> well, did you did you come up to me and say, hello, I know who you are? Because I don't think I would have come up to you and said, hello, I'm Matt Williams, I'm on YouTube, would you like a sticker? <laughs> right? It's not going to happen, right? It's people say, like, I've seen you somewhere, and I'm like, yeah, where? And they're like, oh, I don't know. Are you like, um, are you connected? And it's usually like, are you connected with EWF or something like that? Because I've seen those sorts of videos. And I go, yeah, yeah, I've been out on them. And they said, yeah, yeah. And then they list the video that they've seen, and I start chatting to them. That's how I meet people. So this guy is going, I boasted about being on YouTube. Boasting. I'm a YouTuber. Yes, I'm the big YouTuber. Rick boasting about being on youtube i set up an account on youtube i put my videos on youtube people subscribe it's like eating food it digesting and me having a crap it's it's just the way it is yeah uh, it, it's like a perfectly natural process it's not me going around i am michael jackson well i wouldn't want to be michael jackson actually it could be uh, construed in various ways but i am i don't know um, I am somebody very famous and, you know, ho, 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 look at me and I've got security and blah, blah, blah. I'm not, like, I'm not out there like that, you know. And if somebody's like, um, if somebody's chatting to me and somebody else has said, like, have you got stickers? Because people will often say, you know, do you want a sticker? You know, or, have you got a sticker? I'll say, do you want a sticker as well? And I just go, because I've got them out of my bag. I'll go, anybody else want one? You want one? You want one? You want one? Because I've got them out of my bloody bag. So, and I forget I've got them half the time because I don't even stick them in 90% of the places I go and visit because I forget I've got them in my bloody bag. So there we are with the look how big a YouTuber I am. It just doesn't make it doesn't make sense. So these people are portraying me in some sort of like, he did. I'm, I can just imagine now it's like this. Hey, folks. Hey, excuse me, out of the way. Did you know I've got a YouTube channel? Hey, kids. Anybody want a sticker? <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like making me out to be some sort of like caricature. I don't know. I think I do a pretty good job of that myself. Don't need these guys doing it for me. Um, you know, you were asking if they want autographs. Well, yeah. That's the, uh, and that's the thing, see, I mean, I shy away from the, like, you know, the T-shirts and things because I find it a bit. I find it a bit cringy. Uh, don't get me wrong, right? You know, it's like if everybody else wants to wear T-shirts of other people, that's fine. I don't mind seeing people wearing T-shirts of other people. I just find it cringy, the idea that it might be me they got on with these T-shirts, because I don't really want them to be like, oh, Matt Williams, or oh, we really love your stuff. I'm just like, no, I'm just happy you're watching it. I don't want you to love me. I just want you to like the videos, you know. It's like the video. It's about the videos. It's not about me, you know. It's like so, uh, you know. It, I just I haven't got my head around it really. I think some people like to sort of wear your T-shirt as like the, you know some sort of um, you see I am your cult member, and then I go 
cult member. And then you put your hand on their shoulder and you go, yes, it'll all be good. Don't worry. And they're like, oh, God, he touched me and he said it'll all be good. And it's like, I'm like I mean, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm not going there. You know, it's I like. Think, I think a lot of people, though, like to support their creators. And that's the main reason for the T-shirts. They, they do. Yeah, they do. I mean, it is nice, but then I'm I'm somebody that doesn't know how to accept um, compliments very well, <laughs> you know, without being sarcastic and then destroying people by my sarcasm. They're like, I gave him a compliment and he went, oh, you can shove it up your bum, you know? It's like, well, but I was trying to be funny because that's what I do. But when it, when it goes direct to people, they go, yeah, they don't get it sometimes. So, yeah. Hmm. When you're gonna have a T-shirt? When you're gonna have T-shirts? And, and I I'd literally probably say like, "Screw that," you know, "Screw that," which means they're saying like I'm saying, "Screw them," you know. No, no, I'm just saying, "Screw that." I ain't got a time. I can't be asked, you know. But people take it personally when you, you know, you don't want to sort of do the things they want you to do. But I, I, I can't, I can't take the subscribers seriously when they ask me to do things like that, um, and I can't take 28 days later seriously when they're slagging me off like this. So I, I don't listen to hardly anybody, to be honest. There's not many people I do listen to, um, which I think is kind of like part of the urbex kind of, uh, well, not urbex, it's like the Ali Law sort of mentality. It's like, you know, it, it's like I'm doing what I want to do and see if you can catch me. You know, it's not about wanting people to kind of, uh, you know, um, like what you do. It's just, you know. Get it? It's trying to get. I think it's just about inspiration. Because if I hadn't seen Ali Law, I wouldn't have got up off my ass to start doing these videos. Mm. What I would like to do is inspire people to get up off their own asses and start doing it. But yeah, I don't want them to just kind of like uh, you know think that I'm anything special because uh, I ain't. I'm really not. You know. Uh, oh, here we go. Oh, the blokes and nonce. Blokes and nonce, it says. All right. So I'm hearing a lot of that lately. Yeah. Um, his whole attitude whilst exploring is stupid. His commentary is horrendous and pointless too. Plain and simple, a goon. A goon. I hear this goon a lot. So I wonder if these people are going goon. Goon is the same person with different accounts. Because that would never happen, would it? There we are. Right. Um, I watched it out of curiosity. What a total dickhead. Yeah, see, they, they, they're great with these adjectives, and they? they don't they don't really explore what you've done and explain it. They just go, he's a dickhead, what a goon, I can't believe mug, what a mug, prick, wanker, tit, arse, bollock, and the, the C word. You know what I mean? It just well, sounds like a lot of jealousy to me because you actually go in and try and give knowledge, and that's what you spend 90% of your time doing is going around and explaining what you think everything is. Which I, I find think, very interesting in an explorer as opposed to somebody just walking through, you know. I'm genuinely excited by the things I'm seeing, you know. Uh, if I get excited, I hope that that excitement, you know, rubs off on people. But, you know, I don't normally go out of my way to wind people up, but I will stand my ground, you know. And in, in the case of this fat bastard, he just, he just pushed my wrong button because I have a particular hatred of, uh, you know, obesity. So I decided to use humor to wind him up. I could have just been nasty to him, you know, which would not have looked good in the video, but that's not me. You know, I was using humor to try and sort of combat uh, his sort of nimby, I'm going to get you, I'm going to call the police, I'm going to waste police time because you're walking around. And we're just walking around in front of him like, mate, we're right here, mate, filming. We're right here, mate. What are you going to do about it, mate? We're filming. <laughs> you know, and it's like, and he's getting wound up and wound up, and it's like, oh, he's wound up. Look, it's a like, fat, fat so you fat bastard. Go on, ring the police. We're waiting for him. We'll stay. We'll wait here until they come, mate. And then you can watch as we get let go, yeah, and deflate your fat gland. You know, it's like I know it's childish, but you know, anyone who's going to give me grief, I'm going to try and spin it, you know, into some sort of positive or comedic thing. Yeah, it's just a bit childish, but. I don't do it all the time. I'm not literally like Ali Law and his crew because they are geniuses at it. <laughs> so um, anyway, so he says, what a total dickhead. You know, yeah, gets caught straight away. But we didn't try not to get caught. If you notice the way we did it, right, 
once we were observed that we were observed we carried on we were like well we've been caught let's carry on okay because what are they going to do that was the whole point um and then he called a bloke that he spotted a fat c word and then he cries about threatening behavior well actually i just try to point out the um you know the the hypocrisy of the fat bloke screaming and shouting that he was going to kill us and this sort of stuff whilst he was ringing the police saying that um you know there were these people doing doing this uh, you know coming in it's like well you know one crime to stop another so it's like i'll kill you i'll come over there and i'll smash your effing head in you complete pricks and it's like i can see the guy just wants to be wound up so i'm actually just meeting his expectations he wants something to happen that's why he's engaging us yeah so when you give him something and we go we don't care we're going to go and explore it anyway we're just taking photos don't worry mate and he's like but the police will come and i go that's fine when the police come we will leave don't worry you know he will be perfectly all right mate see you in a bit and it's like so he's now getting wound up because he's not getting the negativity that he wanted because he wanted negativity to start with yeah let's be let's be serious here yeah he wanted some sort of confrontation either submission completely to his domination yeah which would have given him an ego boost or he wants negativity which means he can get something out of it yeah so let's not be let's not let's not beat around the bush now if you can't tell the type of person you're dealing with when you get something like that right I, I, there's no hope for you yeah i mean well for this for this person there's certainly these people there's certainly no hope but um you know i'm trying to turn it into a funny because in a strange way it's like you get people screaming to shoot you a shotgun some days i mean that's not very funny is it but like seeing somebody wound up who's too fat to get over a fence and is we're literally standing there going mate we're just going to do our thing and he's like you're going to call the police he's like well you call the police there, mate but you know if you come over the fence you can stop us if you wanted to oh I'll, st I'll, I'll stop you well no you can't because you can't climb over the fence mate because you're a bit fat aren't you so you just stand there with your phone mate take your photos <laughs> you'll be all right you'll be all right mate you know and it's like you know it's, it's the stupidity of the situation it's like he literally couldn't get over the fence you know so there's no point telling me that you're going to kick my head in when you can't get near me because I'm standing right in front of you, but you're going, you're going to kick my head. In. I'm like, I'm waiting. Here I am. Come and kick in, please. <laughs> it's like, come on then. You know? Hey, check your uh, super chat. Matt. Oh, okay. I thought it was funny, uh, but you know, see, this is the thing. This is like, they take every single thing that we do, even when it's humorous and they turn it into a negative. So they just know better than the fat guy. You know, they know better than your police officers or your security guards who are, you know, like trying to stop people doing this stuff. These guys are no better than any of those because they're taking an interesting explore and a funny situation and they go in, no, negative, no, get him, no, he's a bastard, no. And they just use it everything. If you put a, a put a, a corral around me of every single possible thing that's negative, yeah, and and just like literally, I think you could probably do a conference. You could do a weekend conference of We Hate Matt Williams, yeah, and you could have like delegates from all countries all over the world come in to tell you, you know, with undeniable, indisputable information of why I am a complete dickhead, yeah, and a bastard, and a C, and an F, and all these, and it'd probably be quite entertaining. But it's also very sad, yeah, because you're not adding anything to the mix. You're not adding anything. You're not adding to exploring, you know. I, I think that by me going there, doing that video, and just having a laugh, it's going to give other people a bit of motivation to deal with things in a non-serious, light-hearted manner. Because let's face it, the last time I had an encounter with security, it was quite, it was quite gnarly, yeah. So this one was a bit piss takey, yeah. So I'm just trying to show you that I have got a spectrum from good to bad, yeah, or funny to unfunny, yeah. I've got a full spectrum of um, things in my arsenal I can use, and uh, these people just don't have a sense of humour, I don't think. Um, let's have a look then, right? Uh, uh, oh yeah, they want asked if I wanted a sticker. Let's scroll down, right? Um, also, the one rule you see here we go rules. 
straight away. I'm not. I, I've never not read these yet. Okay, because I didn't read them on purpose. Okay, but they're talking about rules here. You see these unwritten rules, which are different for one person to another. But the one rule I've always lived with is to leave if caught. But I wasn't caught. Who was I caught by? Some nosy person who, who's next door who doesn't well, own the place. He had nothing to do with the guy. He was just parked there. He was a truck driver. It's none of his He's business. a truck driver <laughs> in the place next door. I wasn't caught. If he owned the place and he said, listen, this is my place. Please get out of here. You would have said, okay, sorry. Yeah. It says, right, regardless of what you're phot photographing, don't dick around and ignore them. Honestly, the goons and gimbals ego right now is dreadful. Goons and gimbals. Here you go. That was an attempt, very transparent attempt to say, these guys who walk around with stabilized gimbals for their YouTube videos, them YouTube videos, YouTube videos. Yeah, right. Because they are elitists. Yeah. They're elitists who think that it should just be photographs and that we need to be dig, 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 screw, 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 take the piss, take the piss, and hope one day, one day, it's actually going to make a difference to what I think. Not anytime soon, I don't think. It's just entertaining. I just like to, I like to read this. It's comedy, right? Uh, oh, yeah, again, uh, the guy who wrote earlier on that he said, I'm a nonce, has written, I'm a nonce again. Oh, my God. So this seems to be like we're going round in circles here. Um, right, okay. Um, okay, he says, uh, I hope he gets... Somebody's just said, I hope he gets his jaw snapped. That's not nice. <laughs> really? You, really? You really would? So hang on a minute. Hang on. Right. Are you telling me then that... One day, if I had my jaw snapped by somebody, you'd all be laughing and you'd think it was great. That's a bit sad, isn't it? Is that what is that what you're about in this forum? Because this is this mo this has not been moderated. This has not been removed. Hopefully, he gets his jaw snapped. So now, do you kind of see? You know, you get into like the dark side now. Like me ribbing somebody, like winding them up. It's like, no, I like to see him get his head smashed open and the blood dripping down the pavement and going down the drain. I'd like to see his brain splatted out on the pavement. Uh, uh, and then I'd be happy because then we can have our photos and these gimbal goons wouldn't be there anymore because we can go back to photos and we'll own the world. Is that what it's about? Or do you just like seeing people's blood running, running, you know, like, you know, like down the down the drain? And the pavement onto the drain. So uh, the guy responds by saying, that's a bit harsh, but I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now, sir. You go too far with this smashes brains out. But but I agree. Well, I'm, a, I'm not normally, you see, not normally. But 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 in this case, he's a, Mr. Williams is a special type of mutant that in this case, I would agree. Normal rules do not apply. The law should not apply to Mr. Williams, and he should have his, his face smashed in. Oh, God. Yeah, because what you're doing looking at something is wrong, but smashing somebody's face in is okay. Makes sense to me. Well, according to the forums, which this type of comment is allowed on the forums, that smashing my face in is okay, and nobody's moderated it. In fact, they're all having a good giggle. It's a good old joke. Don't worry. I can see the humorous side as well. I know they're probably not serious, but it does make you think. Um, anyway, uh, somebody says, uh, I want to do swapsies. I've got the nearly, uh, I've nearly got the full EWF set. Uh, um, full EWF set. I think, it's, I think they're referring to stickers here, as in like they've had a sticker off EWF and they would like to get a sticker off me. So, I, I don't I don't believe there are people who would like to collect these things, you know, but they're well, saying I still gotta get you my address so you, you have your spot reserved on the back window of my truck already. 
actually you're right and there's somebody else i need to send stickers to yeah there's a few people actually um in fact i'm kind of thinking what i'll do for a few people um if i can if it's affordable for me to do it uh they're sending me donations i'll just if they send me their address i'll send them a sticker for the thank you for the donations but uh i haven't quite got around to it and it ain't merch because i ain't selling it it's just thank you for just sending me money i didn't ask for so uh you know so uh Oh, in fact, talking of which, I think there were three things I ignored earlier on because we were in the middle flow of chat. Hang on a second. Can I get back to him? Luke White, towards an Angel Cam 360, he has donated five pound. Five pound. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure there were two others as well. Oh my god, have I missed them? I'm really sorry, guys. Uh, it's not showing me in the thing now. Yeah, I got a reminder from Liam, and I passed it on. Oh, what to me? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm really sorry. Uh, Nat Natalie Hibbert has just oh, oh, she just left a comment that I would have probably agreed with, but I, I think I would agree with it. I'm going to do it right. Um, oh, hang on. Ah. I'd actually agree with that comment. I'm, I'm going to say moderators. I think you were a bit harsh there. Um, you know, of course, I love you moderators, and whatever you do is fine by me. But uh, um, Natalie Hibbert said, 28 days later are just a bunch of kids thinking they're shit hot when nobody actually likes them, and they're just a bunch of drug-taking vandals. Well, I don't know if they are vandals, um, but I think probably there are... Uh, We've got Monique Andrea wants to come in. I'll put Monique in. Hello, Monique. Hello, Monique. Hello, Monique. Hello. Hello. I've seen your name enough in the in the, the chat. You've stalled your video stalled. Are you guys all right? I am, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. But I've seen you comment. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hello. I thought oh, I can I can recognize that name, so I'll allow you in. Um, thanks for coming on. But yeah, they, I don't know whether <laughs> twenty. I don't know if twenty eight days of vandals. I don't know what you think about this, Monique. But you know, I don't know if they're vandals. Um, but I think that they are just wanting to control the urbex scene, you know, and and tell people what to do. They're trying to lord it over everyone else. Now, you know. I'm not telling people where they can and can't go. I'm not telling people what they can and can't do, you know. Uh, but I'm getting told a lot by other people, especially on 28 Days Later, what I can and can't do and what I should and shouldn't do. You know, it's like having a bloody, uh, you know, a, a domineering parent. Like, you know, your mum, you won't do this, you won't do that. Or a mm. school teacher's like, you will not do this, you will not do that. I mean... If I listened to half the people, right, who told me that I was never going to come to anything and I was, blah, 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 I'd probably, I'd probably commit suicide. I mean, I've got a slightly bigger yeah. opinion of, a bigger opinion of myself than some of the people who've talked down to me over the years. So I just ignore. I think you know what. Negative comments. Yeah, I think the thing is, I've I've just went on the um like the threads that they've done. Um, mm. And I just like put a little comment on there. I put our oh, secret belt rocks, like obviously, you know, just to wind them up a little bit. Um, and the moderator hasn't accepted my. You're going to get banned. <laughs> You're not speaking a so private line. <laughs> so be it. <laughs> but uh, the thing is, yeah, I mean, I suppose, I suppose it's kind of like an echo chamber on here because we do remove the nasty comments because they they're not helping you know they're not helping you know to kind of see like screw you or you're this or you're that and i mean you know it's just a it's a bit of a downer dog's crying i think she probably wants to put her back for a piece so i'll have to let her out in a minute um but um yeah i don't know it's like you know i don't think it add, it doesn't help it's like these these comments are not making me a better person these comments are not like making the world better they're just they're just like they're just like a car with its wheels spinning doing donuts going round and round and round going wanker bastard horrible bastard horrible die die kill him what? blood kill him death mm. why did it go away uh, uh, uh. most forums just, are really toxic it's just you know nature of I mean, like, people 
if you could tell me, like, you know, where I'm going wrong with some of my editing skills or something, you know, and pick away at things like that, I'd probably read those. I go, is he right? Oh, yeah, I did make a mistake there. I, oh, yeah, I am a bit slack, aren't I? You know, I'm probably more likely to read that than I'm just like, he's a wh- he's, here we are again. Oh, God, you've got this guy. The thing is, though, they all, they all non- hide behind the keyboard, don't they? They all say stuff like typing away, typing away. But I guarantee if it ever come to it, they wouldn't say, oh, yeah, Matt, to your face. Yep. Yeah. Well, this is it. You know, some bloke has said hello to me or said, I know you because I'm not going to know them because I who the hell I don't, I don't know who these people are. So they've come up to me and they've gone, there's Matt Williams. Right. Hello, Matt Williams. And I'm like, hello. And hopefully they'll have had a conversation with me. I w- would have tried my best not to ignore them and, and, and have a chat and answer their questions if they got something they want to have a chat about. If they got any locations, that's why I'm usually like, you know, tell me any got any good locations, you know, I mean. Have a good chat. Dog's howling again. I'll have to go and let her out in a minute. But, um, you know, and then to say, like, at the end of it, I said, said, like, well, here we are. There's my email address. And that's the reason I give people a sticker. It's not like, here's my sticker. Wear it on your face when you're out exploring so everybody takes the photo of you with my name on your face, right? It's not about me imposing myself on you. It's about... There's my email address and my YouTube channel. I don't know how well you know me. You might recognize me, but there's how to get in touch with me. It's like a business card, you know? It's like when you stick them up, and I forget to do it, when you stick them up on the walls in these places, somebody's going to go, oh, they've been here. I'll look at their video. When I go home, I usually do look at their video of the same place I'm exploring because I know they've been there. So when did they go there? How long ago? Did it look different? Has it become more different? you know, damaged since they've been there. It's just like kind of like that sort of view on things. And it's like, you know, and for people to twist that round into saying like, you know, oh, he's got stickers. It's like, well, have you got a telephone? Have you got a mobile number? You know, if I asked you for your mobile number, I'd go, the wanker gave me his number. What a tosser. Who the fuck does he think he is? Giving me his number. What does he think people are going to ring? They're going to, they're going to, you know, it's just like, what are you on about? It's like, yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to let the dog out for a minute. Can you guys um, manage amongst yourselves for a second? I will, I'll, I'll put this on play so I can let the dog out the back garden. Look, and I'll listen to you whilst I'm out letting the dog out the back garden. But she will urinate in the kitchen if I don't let her out, <laughs> which is not good. Yeah, what's this? This is six. PM. I can't see my video on my channel. Hang on. Oh, there it is. Yeah, what's this? this is PM. I can't see my video on my That's channel. That's pretty good latency, actually. I'll see you in a second, guys. Yeah, what's this? Don't go doing anything PM. rude whilst I'm away. That's pretty good latency. Come on, Well, you can talk to each other. Oh, yeah. Well, I just have a car pulling in. I'm holding the dog back. <laughs> <laughs> talk. Talk okay. to each other. See ya. Yeah, Kim and Dan. I agree completely. And the same people that see him, you know, they don't have that to say to his face, but then they go online anonymously. anonymously and Play. It. Oh, there we go. I'm back. Welcome back. I can't look at the cameras. Hello. On the stupid phone. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. Yeah, I think proper Wi Fi problems. <laughs> Sound good. I'll have to look up this 28 days. I, I won't be able to hold my tongue, though, when I go there. Hello, Melissa Jones. No, I think... You know what, on that 28 Days Later website, I've had a look through, because um, I've tried looking on there uh, for places to explore when I go and... They're all just so, so rude, and they all argue with each other. And it's literally just a bunch of just. Your voice keeps dropping out. 
his ball's down here if you want to get it. Oh. There you are. Right there. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I can't see the camera oh. when I'm in chat. Let's see. Yes, hit the like button, everybody, please, if you have the chance. Agree, Tinks. Uh, there we go. There you are. That's better. <laughs> All good. I mean, if it wasn't, if it wasn't, uh, Tinks, if it wasn't for the YouTubers, nobody would be able to share these experiences. So. I don't understand how they can, you know, think they're pros just by taking pictures and, like Matt said, making them look different. It's through yeah. you guys that I get to get to uh, experience these, and I'm in America, so I love seeing these places I'd never be able to see otherwise. You know, that's it. And I mean, I think it's all well and good taking pictures, but you know, people like nowadays you can film it, so why not film it and put it on the internet for people to see? You know, people like nowadays, you can film it. So why not film it and put it on the internet for people to see? Exactly. Good point. Nowadays, you can film it. So why not film it and put it on the internet for people to see? I agree. Oh, Matt's back, I guess. Let me get back to the cameras. Hey, Matt. No, no, no. You, you, I've been listening to you out, outside, and, and I agreed with all with, with your points, you know. You were spot on. Um you you were saying that they do just argue amongst each other a lot, which is that's not that's not why people have come to that urbex place is to like see people firing off nasty comments at each other. I mean that just destroys people's like want to be there. So a lot of people I think who've grown up with twenty eight days later and these other sites, we use them. They're a resource. I use them, you know, and uh, I look at them. You know, if I type in a search and it pops up on 28 days later, I go on there, I look at the photos and I go, right, I'm going to go to that place. Even if it says don't go there or, you know, this, that and the other, I ignore all that crap that's coming from people because, you know, they've got agendas. They don't want you going there because they're jealous. Some people treat places like they belong to them, right. you know, yeah. and it's like their personal place and you can't go there. Right? You've got all that sort of like nonsense going on. So I ignore all of that, but I just want to know how do you get there? And I glean from the the, the the stuff how to get there. And that's it. To me, reading those comments underneath anything in, in 28 Days Later is just so counterproductive because I'm just like, you know, if you read those comments, you literally, you get depressed. You know, it's like, I don't, I, where are people, where are these people coming from? And I don't want to meet those people on Explores. I mean, but, you know, if, if these people have, as you said, they won't say it to your face. If these people have come up to me and gone, hi, hi, shook my hand, said hello or whatever, and, and or been in a group of people, I mean, like, they must know who I am. So they're talking to me. You know, I'm happy to talk to them. And what? They're going behind my back and then going like, oh, what a wanker. Yeah, yeah. I stood there and looked at him and he was like there. And, and people said, like, you know, how do I get in touch with you? And he had these stickers. And he gave them stickers. Nothing yeah, like, wrong with a sticker, Matt. <laughs> do you know what? Right. Like, if you don't like me that much, right, just literally come up to me and say, I've seen your videos and they're <laughs> fucking shit. Right. I'll go, okay. Because you'll be, face. trust me, you'll be the minority of people I meet. Honestly, I meet a lot more people who've seen the videos and actually like the videos than I meet people who would come up and do that. And I would respect it if you say, like, I'm from 28 Days Later and I think you're a friggin' tosser. Yeah, just don't swing a punch because I probably will defend myself, yeah? So, you know, it's like, but, you know, if you want to tell me how much you hate me to my face, great, I can deal with that, yeah? Because I will not shake the hand of anyone I know has been slagging me off in the past. And I've, not in Urbex, but there's been a lot of other things where people have been like, nah, 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 nah. And I've never even spoken to these people. They've never contacted me, and they're just like gunning against me. And then when you meet them at a conference, they come up and they and they want to shake your hand, like as if it's all water under a bridge. And I just go, uh, "Excuse me." And they're like holding out their hand, like, "Come on, shake my hand." It's almost like as if they think, and I swear it's happened a few times. They think that by you shaking their hand, you're stupid enough to not realize who they are. And I'm like, I'm like, I'll shake your hand when you want to be nice to me. And that's the way I deal with people. It's like, no, I don't shake just anyone's hand. You know, if I don't know you, fair enough. 
But if I do know you and you've been a dick to me, I don't need to shake your hand. You know, it's like, why would I? Yeah, and the great the great thing is too, you are basically my gateway to all these people I've met, and your oh. community of people that follow you on your videos and comment. It's the most non toxic group of people I've probably seen on the internet. So yeah, the actual people you have backing you are awesome people. And I mean, That's you know, of us. Th- yeah, I mean, thank you. It's it's nice to know that people are sort of. Um, seeing it that way uh i'd like to keep it positive i don't want to turn this into a drama drama center i mean some of the recent events which i you know don't really want to go back into for the purposes of this video um i don't really want that sort of drama but you just get thrown in you just get thrown into it by being in the wrong place at the wrong time and that could happen to anybody even these people from 28 days later because let's face it right the ballroom that ballroom place, the underground ballroom. Yeah. How many people from twenty? If I, I, I can't bring it up on screen, but if I do a search now on the ball underground ballroom, right? Underground ballroom, just to prove a point. I'm not sure if I might. Let's, let's see if I'm right. Underground ballroom, twenty eight days later. Right here we are. A report from September twenty twelve. Right. Here we go. I'm scrolling down. Photos of a staircase. Photos of an archway. In looking up at the above, rusting long oval-shaped sh- tunnels through the windows. They're doing light painting. You know, light painting. They like to do that sort of shit, don't they? They like to do light painting. I mean, I'm not saying you know, but it's 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 like it's just like a formula. It's like a formula in all these photos, like how you take them, what you do, light painting, throwing a bit of this, doing a bit of that. You know, it's like it's all it's a big formula, yeah. And everyone is getting like really good at taking ten photos that got the formula, you know. Okay, so let's have a look at another. Is there anything else? Yeah, there's one from 2020. Right, there's one from 2018. There's one from 2015. I'm just gonna scroll through these, right, right. Surrey, yep, here we are, underground ballroom. Yeah, then going in, going down, photos, 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 photos. Yeah, not as good as the first lot, but good. And then there's lots of comments underneath. Oxygen Thief, that's one name I remember from that <laughs> bloody from that bloody um, forum. Now I see his name there. Right. Um, here we are, another one. Yeah, a bit of history background on this one. So no real photos of the inside, just photos around the, around the outside of it. Okay, here we are. Uh, uh, yeah photos around the area okay so you know there you go right there are loads of people on 28 days later who have done what i did and tried to get in to look at that place i am unlucky because i had the security get arsy with me but i have managed to film it which is the difference if you had a camera with you all you'd manage to do is take some photos of the feet of the security guards or maybe a face yeah, and and you could tell people till you're blue in the face, like, oh, the security guard punched me. Well, have you got any video of it? No. Well, why is that? Well, I'm just carrying a DSLR. Oh, so you didn't film it? No. Well, didn't you pull your camera out? Well, I, I don't really film things when they're happening. I'm just more of a photographer. Oh, right. Okay. So how how is it then, right, that I'm pretty much what the only person to to get shit from security down there? Well, no, apparently I'm not. It's been going on for years. Some kid got shot in the leg, remember? Some kid got shot in the leg by the by the people down there. Dan Dixon got ran off the road like the guy was trying to kill him in his Porsche KN. Yeah, that guy went to jail for a small amount of time, a crazy small amount of time, considering he shot a kid in the leg with an unregistered shotgun. Yeah, and he went to jail for an incredibly small amount of time. Now, here's the here's the thing. That guy is out of the picture, we thought. We thought he was in jail. Apparently he's not. Yeah, um, but when we go back to this place, we go to. Uh, I can hear somebody trying to come in. Uh, we'll bring in Rob P. Then, so Rob P. will bring. We'll come to you in a second. I'll just finish this. Finish the story. I mean, like when you're there with a video camera. I mean, I'm capturing that that sort of like dynamic situation, like Dan Dixon did. He didn't ask for that shit. He went there to to photograph the ballroom. Just like 28 days later, and all these people who've gone in before, yeah, I bet you a lot of these people have encountered security over the years, but it's just not something they can fully relate because they're taking photos, yeah? So we come along, and we're all encountering the security. 
it's not something we wanted it's just something that happened yeah so do you think i'm not not, not going to put that on my channel i think it's interesting i think you need to warn people sometimes that these people are there and you know it's kind of like to me it seems like a responsible thing to do to say this is the sort of caliber of person you're going to be meeting like you might meet somebody who's just gobby and you might meet somebody who's going to try and trip you up and is pushing you into the bushes like those security guards were how did i know what they were going to did i know am i telepathic they were going to be like that no i just went back to get my stuff that was in my my, my bloody you know um rucksack i left a load of my camera gear and, and the tripod in the in the rucksack and we just walked away and i thought well I'll, I'll come back and get that later on you know but there we go anyway so these people are saying like you know that we have been aggressive towards the security we weren't when was i aggressive did i push the security guard did i scream in his face did i make threats did i say you know i'm going to get you and all that stuff? no i just wanted to walk away from them until the police came because i knew if i went back in that place with them They'd be playing bloody dirty tricks on me. So no thank you. You know, and I was getting close enough to a main road to be like, right, now I'm gonna stop traffic and just say, Can you call the police, please? You know. Yeah, because it's a safer option. It's a safer option exactly. than going back with these monkeys. You know? I've so, got to get I've gotta get going, Matt. Uh, I think... Okay, Dennis. Well, thanks for coming in. See you later, Dennis. Take Check care. out 28 Days Later, and you can tell us what you think then, whether or not oh. you're impressed or not impressed. I mean, they've got great photos. Mm. Yeah. Tell, mm -hmm. us, tell us what you think later at some point, yeah? We'll I think, I think. do you know what? I think the problem with the photos is they're all really over-edited. That's true, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, some are pretty basic. I mean, I look they at some like there. They really, and... really edit it so much to the point. Hmm. I think I've, I think I've seen a few on there that you know that are really really good, but then I've also seen some that you can just see that they've just gone overboard with it a little bit. Yeah, and I mean you know I can I can put my camera. I've got the Sony camera that I put on the gimbal, which they seem to hate so much for some reason. But believe it or not, if they if they themselves used gimbals, they could take photos handheld in night conditions because the thing is so stable they could take photos at night without having to have a tripod so guess what they don't have to walk around with a tripod boosh yeah um but we won't go telling them about, about new technology or fancy things like that because they want to use you know like kodak brownies from the 1930s you know it's like put a slow exposure for 30 seconds and hold the hold the thing open and you can take night photos that way or you can have one of the cameras like i've got which means you just go click and it's taken a night photo, and you don't have to have it on a tripod. But apparently, new cameras and video and gimbals is heresy. Bollocks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But but of course, when you hold the, the lens open for that amount of time, they love doing this light painting where they walk through with their torches and create shapes. In, and it's like, you know, and then you look in the next explore and it's like somebody's gone through and they've gone through with the light and then they, they're doing a bit of da, 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 da. I, I bet you if i go through half the photos on bloody 28 days later i'm going to find light painting pictures right i just do like 28 days later and i'm just going to go for any link all right um let's have a look 28 days later dot co dot uk all right let's just pick one i don't know hospitals and asylums right that's near the top Right, I see a uh, couple down, Harperbury Hospital, June 2018. Let's have a look, right, okay. So scroll down, yeah, normal picture, normal picture, it's daytime, so you probably won't be doing the light painting, but scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. I'm just expecting any minute now to see some light painting. Come on, show me some light painting. Oh, it's getting darker, and then he finished. Ah, oh, damn. But should we try one more, randomly run more, see if I'm right? It's just like it's a it's a theme, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, uh, there's no photos in this so far. No, 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 no photos, no photos, no photos, no photos, no photos. Okay, well, we'll we'll assume that I'm wrong on that one, but it's something that sticks out with me is like you know this light painting nonsense, you know, and yeah, they're okay. The photos are the photos are okay, but they're no they're no better than. than a, a, and explore with walking around with a video camera, I think. But you know, 
the the problem with the the photos is they're kind of like art yes and that's not really the appeal for most people the appeals having something that's accessible that they wouldn't normally be able to like access like like that some of the places you've been in like that uh place down in union yes. street with the the hotel where it's just an absolute death trap well like, yeah you see me in there in like a million years <laughs> so but the, the fact that you've gone in there and you've kind of shown us around that's kind of the cool piece about it and you know the building does the speaking you haven't got to do yeah. any arty stuff i mean the fact that you know when you if you took a photo of a, of a stairs that could actually collapse I mean, a lot of them, you know, you're not going to get that in a photo because it's just a stairs. But if you step on it with a video camera, you can see it depressing and you can see and I'm bouncing up and down going, look, 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 this could go through, you know, and it's like so there's there's something you could never capture that sense of like, you know, like um, excitement and danger. Not that I would want to go through, but because I'm fairly safe for what I do, but I'm trying to say, look, look how bad this is. This is not. It's not really safe. We're going to have to stop at some point. And we do. We turn back because you're like, nah, don't go any higher. Because the higher you go in these buildings, the worse the, the floors are, the worse the water's got in. You know, it's like, so yeah, it's, um, but you don't capture that. So I think videos have their place and photos have their place. Photos are a great way for people who take videos like me to know where to go. But if you ask me, would I really prefer to see a load of photos of a place or a video? video every time i'm just a big video freak you know i love video and you know i have done for a long time youtube is just a, the biggest boon on the planet because i can watch cats like cats falling off chairs all day long and i love that shit <laughs> you know i just love watching like dogs f f you know like sliding on snow or riding on the front of somebody's boat or you know like on a skateboard i love childish videos all day long I like pranks. I like weird shit, and you know, you just don't get that on television. Not, not like in raw form, you know. I love it. So anyway, Rob. By the way, we yeah. should introduce Rob. So hello, Rob. And hello, Rob. We, yeah, and, Hi. and we should say hello to Monique as well, because you know, where would where are both of you from? We'll start with Rob then, because he hasn't really said very much. So Rob, where are you from, and what are you about, and do you have a channel? And yeah, so I'm in Plymouth. Uh... I guess it's kind of exciting because you guys, like Derek Plymouth on Earth, and you are doing a lot yes. of content from down here, which is pretty cool. Yes. Um, no, I don't have a channel. Do I do Arabic stuff? No, not really. Um, I'd probably go and have a look around somewhere, but I'm not like as dedicated as what you'd be to be honest. So. Well, to be honest as well, I mean, people think that like everything they see in the videos is everything we do. And trust me, a lot of I've been down to Plymouth about six or seven times and really i haven't you know there's no videos come from it it's just research you know um it's looking at things and you know just getting an idea like we might film something of a building we know and did end in a video but the other half of it is like well what about that as well and what about that and a lot of things come to nothing you know but it's research you know, the guys are out there tonight and they're sussing out what's out there and you know, I'll probably get the cream of the bloody crop because they'll tell me what the good stuff was. And, uh, you know, but I've been down there with a couple of times and, uh, you know, been out sort of having a look at things that, you know, people wouldn't normally look at. They don't, they're not, they're not the most big or impressive things in the world, but it's like, well, but what was that then? And we've had some surprises. I mean, eventually I think these surprises will come to something, but we're going, well, why is that there? And nobody's mentioning this. It's not in the history books. And it's like, but that looks like that's that's a tunnel. This has all been built to hide the fact there's a tunnel there, you know, and it's like now you don't realize that this is the front end of a tunnel, you know, and it's like, so we're kind of looking at stuff. And Plymouth is, I've never seen anywhere that's quite as mad as Plymouth, actually. It's, I mean, there's a lot of tunnels in London, but it's knowing how to access them. Plymouth is, it's just like everything's just strewn around, you know, and it's like nobody's stopping you going to look at them a lot of the time. It's wide open to kind of have a look at. I'm getting that vibe from it. It's very, very, yeah, you know. It's kind of a run, it's, it's a little bit run down. It's modern, but it's like slightly run down as well. Like, and people have just forgotten about things. It's abandoned. Like there's a lot of abandoned things, but they're just in plain sight. So you don't even know they're abandoned. But if you've got an eye for abandoned, Plymouth like was just like what, 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 
my my radar was going off completely like you know in right in plymouth but do you notice it because you live there because i bet you don't always because you see it um, all the time so you don't notice it i think i notice it but that's i'm looking for it um i think most people don't notice it to be honest with you there's a there's, lot of uh, night, nightclubs there's a hell of a lot of closed down nightclubs in plymouth it is interesting as well because a lot of your stuff seems to be in like the city center kind of area. Mm -hmm. There's quite a lot on the outskirts as well. Um, a small old forts. Um, yes. Uh, it's a bit of railway infrastructure uh, as well, which is abandoned. Which I don't know whether that's as exciting, but uh, yeah. pretty deep tunnels and stuff. Um, there's a fair few uh, citizen sort of or civil shelters as well. Um, yes. Which again, there's pictures of them but not much video Indeed, I'm not, yeah i'm not saying that they're like a complete explorer like in their own right they're probably micro you know, explorers you, you could bunch a few of them together in one video potentially but yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's not in the city center which people don't realize is out there the thing is as well i mean we're holding back on a lot of this stuff because i don't want to start making it too obvious where we've been uh because we haven't finished is if you do like one little micro as you say like a bunker or like an air raid shelter or something like that and then you just show like 10 minutes of clip uh, there's a few more near it and we'll blow those out of the water because everybody will start just going crazy in that area and then probably everything will get shut up because it seems like one byproduct from you know, doing these videos is everyone's really excited but you know i think everybody everybody works also for the bloody council and the authorities and they go look what the, you know look where they are go and close that up you know but hey you know you should get in touch with the, the guys down there and get to see some of these things before they get shut up mm. and that's the other thing that derek uh, 28 days later say as well is we shouldn't tell people about these things because they'll get shut up and then they've got a forum showing people the, the the very things we're talking about so it's like it's a case of well we don't name where they are and we don't show where they are and we don't we don't get we don't show the entrances in but it's kind of defeats the purpose it's like saying somewhere in the south of england is this bunker and somehow we got in and anyway we're not going to tell you where it is but enjoy and it's like really and you go on 28 days later and it's like it's like this is the name of the place this is the name of the and we're told we're not supposed to do that because it's bad yeah and it's like it's it's all over their forums but here's the thing nobody's looking at their forums when 28 days later go and take photos of things they don't get shut down but when i go and take photos of things they get shut down why maybe there's a lot of people watching yeah so there's the difference and and that I think they're upset about because I I could look up some of my video statistics now and I get more views in a couple of days or a couple of weeks than a lot of their forum threads get in a month, you know? So, and that's not, I'm not like putting myself on a pedestal, but I think that we're starting to get into like crazy territory. And then when you get to like Dan Dixon territory and Steve Ronin territory, I mean, like, you know 28 days later if they were if they had like 20 30 times more subscribers they still wouldn't be even halfway near like the steve ronins out there you know so jealousy or anger because people are, are popular and people are looking at the videos i can't help that i mean we just i don't think that's something that we should be slagging ourselves off for mm. anyway monique andrea because she's gone now, so I call her, but she's like, oh. <laughs> Hello. Sorry, I am here. <laughs> Hello. Putting your makeup on. No. I've got some, I got some makeup here. Hang on. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like you're doing your makeup. Well, I was. Yeah, I was a bit of um, Savlon, you know, a right? bit of Savlon. <laughs> you know, sort out my zits on my nose. I'm nearly back to normal, actually. I had like a really bad uh, sunburn from doing an explore without suntan lotion on, and uh, it's still there. But I, I, I've you know nearly got rid of it. So, but yeah, uh, I was going to say I, uh, yeah. well, I have got I have got to make a stick here somewhere. But I, I hide my nasty big red patch there, like a uh, like a concealer, stick. a concealer stick. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Because I, I don't really think that people like you know they're going to be like looking at looking at the screen like this. 
looking at my big red <laughs> zit on my head otherwise. Yeah. It's bad enough I've got a gap in, gap in my bloody teeth where the, 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 the crown fixing has come out and you can't get a bloody dentist because all the dentists won't see people unless it's an emergency. And that is not an emergency. So therefore, oh, explorer fighters. <laughs> I'm speaking his language. He said jealousy, mate. He says explorer fighters in the house, by the way. Oh, hey, I'm hello, Dan. Yeah. I'm going to mute you a minute because... I think it was a bit loud there in the background, Monique. We've got, um, I can hear a lovely baby trying to uh, tell you that they want you. <laughs> so I'm going to mute you. Unmute yourself when you need to, okay? But it was just like a year, like, it's like my dog going, ah! I do apologise. No, I do apologise. He, he, ha he is being dealt with. <laughs> oh, you got somebody there looking after it. Well, Hey, my uh, my dog is like uh, she hears me talking, and she starts crying, you know. And it's like if I ignore her, she will just have a pee out of tantrum, like you know, because it's like I didn't go down to make the fuss of her, because you know, yeah. I see she won't, she don't come up here. I got to go to her, or I've got to have food, you know. It's like she's got me, she's got me sussed. Um, anyway, so going back to Dan, thank you for your five pound donation, and uh, yes, we we'll put it, we'll put it in the pot and we'll be doing a live draw where you can um you can have a ride on my boat or we'll give you a lithium 16580 charger for my old gimbal and a battery you could win this prize right well, no, hey. I'm not, yeah no you could you could or you could have the filter off a gas mask, which will protect you from asbestos. But you'll have to hold it pretty close. And coronavirus. I'm... Yeah, and coronavirus. But you have to actually breathe through it because I haven't actually got the, the thing. So as long as you breathe through that, you'll be all right. So you can win those things tonight. No, I'm only I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Um, but, yeah, jealousy, mate. I laugh. I laugh it off now. That seems to really wind it up. Well, it does, doesn't it? Because, I mean, we are. We like to have a laugh. And... I mean, wouldn't it be very boring if our videos were just like us walking around, not speaking? I think it'd be a bit boring. And Dan, he definitely knows how to have a laugh. So, you know, his videos are full of, uh, you know, jovial sort of stuff. You know, I mean, he's made, he's made that an art form because he can uh, literally just, you know, do a whole evening of uh, entertainment. And it doesn't necessarily have to be about sort of exploring. It's just like, you know, sort of fun. <laughs> so uh, I've usually got to have a topic like um, like this. It's got to be a topic to drive the, the conversation. Uh, but yes, I mean, he can just literally um, uh, have a sort of like, let's, let's uh, drink beer. And if you donate money, I'll drink beer and, and that sort of stuff. And that works. You know, his fans love it. You know, so it's. Uh, why not? Why not? I've even taken. When are you? Um, I've even when are you planning on coming to Kent, Matt? If he's even, he's even did get managed to get me really drunk one night doing it, so yeah, I know it it does work. But yeah, when am I coming to Kent? Mm. I thought you called me something, and I was like, when am? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why are you such? Are you coming to Kent? Yeah, that's right. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I've got a boat now, so I could. Um, mm. Find some place. Look at that. Special keys like this. Weird shaped keys like for a boat. Oh. I better not show them too close because somebody will then work out how to make my key out of the thing. And then they will know, start my, yeah, start my boat. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Ah, when am I going to come to Kent? I've been to Kent many times. Um, I was down in uh, Dover with IKS. And I've been saying to Ian, uh, come on the boat and I will take you to some of these places that you really wanted to see but required a boat. And I said, let's do it. And he's like, i got work. And I'm like, let's do it again then. And he's like, i got work. And he's very busy with work. So he's work, work, work. Apparently, because of the COVID, a lot of the staff are off because of reasons, you know. So then all the existing staff have had to work three times as hard to make up the, um, to make up, you know, the, the, the sort of like the stuff they have to do so mm. i did want, i did want to come back down to dover folkestone uh deal there's stuff down even down in brighton which is brighton is not kent is it um brighton is is it hampshire brighton sussex sussex no i don't know no idea yeah. 
I'm uh, down in yeah. Thanet. Thanet. Uh, mm. There's not that... a lot down here. There's not much, to be honest. Uh, well, you say that, but everybody thinks that because everyone thinks there's nothing. It's always grass is always greener. Um, yeah, that is Thanet. true. Thanet. So have a look where you are then. Oh, Ramsgate, Margate. Mm. I've I've gone from there uh, in the past to Amsterdam on a boat. Hmm. Yeah. I think it was somewhere down by there, wasn't it? Probably the uh, Ram the the uh, Ramsgate. Uh, we've got a uh, like a old ferry port here where ferries used to run to and from. Yeah. Obviously now they use Dover, so they've shut the one down here. Well, yeah, I don't know. It was somewhere around there. Where, where the hell was it? Uh, so there's the Isle of Sheppey, um, and there's the uh, there's the Medway. There's loads of stuff in the Medway. There's the uh, forts. There's a few forts there. Um, there's the Isle of Grain, somewhere you've got to walk out to when the tide goes down. There's the submarine that's in the estuary. Uh, it's a Russian submarine with missiles that have been deactivated on board. Um, you know about these things? Not many of them, no. I think the only the only places, when I've done Explores, I've only really been and gone to uh, Dover, so obviously where you and Ian have been. Mm -hmm. um, I've gone and visited there a few times. Um, but it's trying to find the places. It can be difficult. You've got to really kind of, it's not what you know, it's who you know, I think, nowadays. I'll tell if you if you email me, I'll tell you of a couple of places run by you that I want to do, but I don't want to publicize too much because then everybody will go and do them and before I've gone. But that's not to say they shouldn't hmm. shouldn't go and do them. They're more than welcome to, but I don't want to give them the head start when yeah. I want to, you know, I want to go and do it myself. Otherwise it might get shut, you know. Again, whoever does these things first and they end up getting bloody shut up, like you know. So um there is one which I know a lot of people won't be able to do. And I intend to do. It's called Red Sands Fort. Do you know that one? No. Where is that? In, is that in Kent as well? Is it or? Uh, that is. Um, it's above Hearn Bay. So there's a fort. Oh, Hearn Bay. Okay. Yeah, it's between. If you draw a straight line between Southend and Sea on Margate, yeah. and Margate. If you draw like a straight line across there, right in the middle between the two is Red Sands Fort, and it's these things that I can show it to you on a map, actually. Let me just bring it up on okay, uh, yeah. share share the screen that, for you. That might be worth going and looking at at some point, providing okay. I get a boat. <laughs> Yay. Let me just uh, share this then. Right, here we go. And let me bring up Red Sands Fort. This is the Red Sands Fort, and they're here, and they're right between South End on Sea and Margate. Hold on, let me get my glasses yeah. on so I can have a look at this. Yeah. Bear with me. Yeah, okay. Oh, right. Okay. They're right there. Let me see if you can actually see them on the satellite photos, because you have to be really close. Like, Google doesn't even show them on the satellites, look, because it's it hasn't photographed in that part of the sea. So, um, but they are there. That's why I've labelled it. This doesn't even come up on a map. I've had to put my own little marker there, right? And um, there's various little things around the place, like um, there's a fort there. And see, I'm showing you some of my secret pins here. Look, oh, look at all these secret pins. It's a lot of these things. I haven't even done them. Yeah, uh -huh. secret, secret pins. No, you take them off really quickly so you don't know where they're no one look. <laughs> Nobody look. Don't pause that video. Right, look at these. Look at these things. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. oh. And they're, they're right out in the sea properly out in the sea they look like they could be fun they could be very good fun and some of them are hard to get up to because they don't even have ladders on them so it's it's debatable whether you can even get on some of them and there's a... another uh, another makeshift ladder another makeshift ladder indeed or we're gonna have to have stuff i have got something up there i've got um an mm. arrow and um an arrow thing and you can fire a wire into the air and then oh, it, when it kid. when it hooks over, it's like Batman, you know. When it hooks over the the thing, let me bring it back to the normal That's screen. Proper movie style, that is. Yeah, yeah. You can fire it up and over, and um, yeah. I mean, they pull the pull the rope around then and get it down. And then once you tie the rope off, you can use ascenders. So you ch -ch 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 and you ascend the rope. And I've got all that kit, but I've never used it. But I think these are the we're going to have to go out there on a reconnaissance mission to see just what we need. 
So we're going to go out, look at what we need, and I don't think we should be attempting to do it on that day. We should just be just for reconnaissance, go away, get all the tools we need, and you know, come back and smash it out, like you know, do it, bang. Yeah, really, kind of assess like assess the area first and the location, yeah. make sure it's all kosher. Yeah. Because, I mean, that rope ladder, I made that specifically for Drake's Island. I mean, I measured the distance that it should be and, you know, and all that. And so it was custom made for that job, That basically. was a good ladder. That was pretty good. I, I like that one. Mm. I was a bit worried at first watching watching them go up, but... <laughs> I was too, because, I mean... It like, held. It was all right. It held. It did hold. And I was even wondering myself, like, you know, but I, I you know, didn't want to put anyone else at risk. You know, I was like, mm. let's, let's do this you know, and uh, see if it's safe. And then you, you realise, actually, it's really pretty bloody safe, this this ladder. Like, I mean, I've been on worse in my time, you know, a lot worse. So, yeah, but that's it. So, uh, yeah, we're hoping to get out there. But, of course, it requires not just a boat, a big enough boat to handle waves. And, you know, it might require one person to not come on, you know, and to actually manage the boat. So just yeah. hold it away because the, the the tides come up and down and you, it's hard to I, – I, I don't know if I've even checked the wave, uh, like whether you can anchor a boat there. I've got an app here which tells you the, the distance down underneath the water so you can kind of work out how uh, – oh, that – oh, you'd love to see what I'm looking at on the screen here. That's going to be an explore that nobody's done in the United Kingdom, full stop. And I'm telling you, Dan – Dan and everybody is going to be like shit. How would we do that? Because it's quite it's quite hard. But if you did it, it'd be the stuff of legends. Yeah, it would be.